Good afternoon and welcome to Dash 28 Live. I'm your host, Mike Atkins, and with me as usual, I guess at this point, is uh, Alex Chavez. Hello. Uh, Ashley Moat and Britton Hello. Williams. Hey, guys. And today we are going to be bringing you another second round matchup from the Call to Arms uh, Universal Battle Tournament. It's going to be 2,300 points. It's going to be Pillage with six tokens, just like all the other second round matchups. And we're going to be watching Mark Taylor with his Night Stalkers taking on Michael Percy's Rat King. Hi, guys. Hey there. Hi, how's it going? Awesome. Uh, well, we're really excited to have you guys here. And I am going to go straight into the list. So I'm going to bring up uh, Mark's list real quick. And then you can walk us through it. Sure. There we go. All right, what do you got? Okay, so this Night Stalkers list is unabashedly a cheap attempt at replicating Eric Trowbridge's orc list, basically. <laughs> at least that's, that's how it, it started off, I guess I should say. So it's got the three regiments of Reapers, um, which as a side note, if one of those regiments could be two troops, I'd do it in a heartbeat, but I need those for the unlocks for the heroes. You'll see he later down. Um, had a weird amount of points left over, so I figured just you know throw all the items on them. So one of the regiments has Elite, one of the, one of the regiments has the Brew of Strength, one of the regiments has the Brew of Sharpness, so hitting on twos seems great. Uh, three troops of phantoms, all with a scream shard. I found that the scream shard being defense four, fearless 12. They're great chaff. They're likely to take a couple of wounds here or there. Getting life leech two once a game is just enough that it keeps them in the fight longer than they should be. Going out of the fiends, nothing too earth shattering about those two regiments. They're great chaff, but they do great work at the same time. Then two hordes, one with the J-Boots and one with Pathfinder. Then to the heroes, two Dreadfiends, also nothing too worth shattering. Uh, one horror with the Sacred Horn, the Vicious Melee Infantry Aura, and then Bane Chant 2. So I swapped the Lightning Bolt for that Bane Chant. Um, the last thing are two Reaper Soul Drinkers, just to get more Life Leech on those Reaper Regiments. Um, they just get in the way. Five attacks on threes, crushing one. They've got life leech themselves. Duelist as well means that if there's any cheeky Morgoth running around, you know, it'll, it, it keeps other heroes on their toes. For 65 points, they're, they do a lot of work. All right, very cool. Thank you. And now I will bring up Michael's Rats. All right, what do you got, buddy? I think you muted. Yes, yeah, so I've got the uh, the Ratkin here. A um, little bit of an unconventional Ratkin list. Um, it starts with three regiments of Scurriers. Um, nothing on them. Then it goes down to six regiments of Hackpaws. Um, these guys, I think, are a lot better in this edition as compared to last with the boost of the defense. Uh, when I really test them out in larger numbers. Um, and then that's kind of the core. Uh, beyond that, I have two mutant rat fiends and the tangle. It's kind of my standard uh, monster suite for the ratkin now. Um, we've got three heroes, uh, two of the brute enforcers. Uh, one of those has inspiring, the other one has the war bow, and then a warlock uh, with a bunch of upgrades that he's not gonna use. Um, the uh, the Veil of Shadows and the Sacred Horn for more stealthy um, against no shooting. Um, and then uh, also the uh, the Bane Chan upgrade as well. So, uh, so yeah, it's a bunch of regiments. All of my rally is coming out of my small base units. Um, so kind of just uh, alternate variant on rats that I wanted to test out. Awesome. Yeah, we were, we were talking about it before the broadcast. It's a very, very unconventional rat list. I'm really, really interested to see how this thing works out. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to switch us over to uh, your universal battle. I do have one quick that correction you... that I just realized. So for the last three games I've played in testing, I thought I'd clicked the swap Bane Chant for Lightning Bolt, when in fact, I actually just purchased Bane Chant as an upgrade. So I've been kind of hindering myself the last couple of games, but it actually does have Lightning Bolt 3 and Bane Chant. Cool. Good time to notice. <laughs> All, already I'm getting in. Pass. Already getting in the caveats for why he might lose. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay, so uh, here's the table that you guys have set up. You are playing uh, Pillage with six mm -hmm. tokens, and I believe you guys have put these red uh, markers on the field over top of some terrain to indicate the 
objectives. Correct. Is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. Uh, and you guys are playing just a standard um, epic dwarf mm -hmm. map. Is that correct? Okay. What are That's you guys right. doing for for terrain heights? Anything so un unusual or just the standard heights? Yeah, I think pretty much standard. Um, mm -hmm. We've got what height three hills mm -hmm. height. What was it for the forest height eight? So eight? that monsters can't see over them yeah. when they're on a hill, um, but titans can. Only thing maybe kind of weird. We didn't know exactly what this bottom left piece of terrain was supposed to be. We just called it impassable. It shouldn't really be super relevant other than his first turn. So it's probably the field. I really couldn't tell. So <laughs> we just yeah, yeah. I mean, we we deployed as if it was impassable. So I think we'll just we'll just play with Fair it enough. that way. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Stick just stick with that then. Uh, okay. I think that's it for table layout type questions. So now if we could run through your deployments real quick. So this is uh, Mark's Night Stalkers at the top of the screen and mm -hmm. Michael's Rats at the bottom. So Mark, could you walk us through uh, your units starting over here on the left? Yeah, sure. So on the left is one of my two Dread Fiends. Um, it's just out there. They work best as flankers. And plus, he's got that tricky little you know, hack pause in the bottom left there. So I want to make sure that I kept them honest and they didn't have a free alleyway to my flanks or rear. Um, going along the front then, I've got the three kind of five units of chaff. So alternating between phantoms and the uh, fiend regiments. Um, kind of behind that, you've got the pathfinder fiends in the forest, the three regiments of reapers. Uh, strength on the left, put them on the left because it's less likely they will have a hill to benefit from being crushing strength two natively, and with everything being defense four, except for the two uh, enforcers being defense five, they don't really need any potential thunderous uh, advantage versus the one in the middle is the sharpness and the one on the right is the elite. They don't, they shouldn't need that TC one to get down to twos. I've got the Bane chant behind it with that horror as well, but at least gives it the tactical option. Um, oh, kind cool. of between those two left reapers and then the one to the right of the reaper are the two soul drinkers. That way uh, the, the right soul drinker only has the two regiments in range right now. And the left one has all three, but I've got plenty of time to reposition that to kind of cover as I need, if I need. Uh, then on the far right is the uh, Strider, the J-Boots Fiend Regiment, and then my last Dread Fiend. Kind of, again, they're better as flankers in general. The J-Boots, we got the wall, we've got the forest. Seems more, most relevant for them, and that Fiend just being on the flank to kind of keep those other hackpaws in check was the plan. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, and Michael, starting up here at the left with your rats. Um, yeah, it's going to be just hack pause, hack pause, hack pause, hack pause. Um, yeah, I've got <laughs> a, one, one regiment just kind of out here um, as, a, as a flanker, flank protector, um, you know, whatever the case may end up being. Um, three of them positioned to take the hill, because that's what you do with fast cavalry. Um, with the warlock right there in the center, um, and that warlock again has lightning bolt five, bane chant three, um, and then some stealthy stuff that um, won't matter for this game. Um, Brute Enforcer back there behind them. That one has Inspiring. Uh, so the Warlock does not actually have Inspiring. Um, that, that Enforcer has the Inspiring in, in that little area. Um, in the middle, I have the Tangle flanked by two regiments of Scurriers. Um, no items or anything there. But they just they do what they do. Um, another regiment of Hackpaws next to that. And then in the forest, uh, another regiment of Scurriers. The two Mutant Rat Fiends. Um, behind them, there's the Brute Enforcer that has the Warbow of Kaba, um, which, you know, keeping that little force together, those Rat Fiends are dash 20. Um, so that's keeps them pretty uh, pretty stout. And then uh, another Regiment of Hackpaws over there on the side. All right, great, great. Uh, well, thanks so much for walking us through that, guys. Best of luck in the game. Uh, you guys are going to drop off the stream here in a second, and you guys are going to open with your scout moves, right? Correct. Yes, yeah, I have some scout, and then we'll roll for first turn. Awesome. Well, uh, good luck to both of you, and we'll see you back here after the game. Have All fun. right. Sounds All right. great. Thanks. Go. Have a good game, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Talk good to you luck. soon. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. So raise your well, hand if you've they're seen... they're gone. No, right. Like, raise, raise your hand if you've seen an Alpha Strike Ratkin list before. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't think anyone at home has raised their hand either, honestly. Uh, this is the kind of list I love when we talk about UB and what UB offers, which is putting something that's, you know, if not, you know, halfway ridiculous, completely ridiculous, right? That, that you would never really see at a table. So um, 
this would be super exciting. To, I think I'm, I'm really pumped to kind of get this match going here. I don't know if you guys. So much speed on both sides. Like there's a lot of fast units here. So yeah, yeah that, this is sort of um, like Michael Piercy does this sort of all the time, right? He's, he's <laughs> the, the joke and probably not a joke is that he is a war gaming hipster. Uh, whatever anyone else is playing, he will try and go the other direction on it and play something else. If his army is getting too popular, he'll pivot and play a weird build of a different army just to just to do so. At the end of second edition, when everyone was sort of playing the same variant Ratkin list, I remember there was a tournament uh, that he brought this really crazy, you know, sort of other list. <laughs> So it was, he usually stands out in stark contrast and this is just kind of like, I don't know. I, I expected this from him, not this particular build, but like I expected him to come up with something weird and he did not disappoint. So Did not disappoint. Yeah, I think more importantly, yeah. he kind of makes it work too, right? I mean, that's the thing. I know um, for those who don't know these players, I think they're both, I, I know Michael's still out of Texas. Uh, Mark used to live there. I think he's in Chicago now, so. Uh, both very strong competitors. I'd say um, probably Michael is one of the best players that hasn't gone to the Masters, I think. So, um, like, very, very strong player. I, I'm really, like I said, really expecting to see some really tight play here. Um, it is, you know, as, as Mike kind of mentioned, alpha and alpha to a degree, right? We got to have these two very kind of soft, hard-hitting lists. And when that happens, usually advantage goes to the person with the most speed. Um so one thing the thing to really pay attention to is how Mark is able to utilize those phantoms because they're the fastest thing on the board right now, the speed 10. So if he can put those in position to really like um, slow down some of the hack paws and prevent the, the, the counter charges, the charges, uh, let his fiends kind of get in, um, that's I think going to make a big impact here. And it's, it's really interesting the way it works because he's got the 10 on the phantoms, we got eight on the fiends and hack paws are all speed nine. So they're kind of in between the two units. So it's basically going to all come down to execution from Mark's part as far as getting those phantoms in the right spots to get the charges off before, you know, he has to deal with the hack paws. So it definitely, we'll see how that comes up here. Um, as I say, yeah. that looks like I see a lot of measuring going on here. That's a little bit of creeping up. Yeah, um, so um, Mark actually won the roll for first turn, but then is allowing Michael to go first, which is something you don't see very often, especially not with with Alpha Strike lists. Usually, if you're playing Alpha Strike, like you want to get all your stuff out there and set up and in range to threaten the other guy first and kind of pin him back against the backside of the table. So I guess he's thinking, you know, down the road scenario wise, it's he's he's going to have an advantage at the end in terms of grabbing objectives in the last turn, like. It's kind but of an unconventional. I see path. two reasons why he would do that. One is if you look at the way that the board was set up, and I don't know if we have the information as far as who picked what side, but there are four tokens more or less on Michael's side. So going first is not necessarily going to put him in a better position to capture more objectives. He can kind of sit back and wait and, and let Mark kind of come to him a bit. So he's saying, hey, I don't really need to push the advantage here. Um, secondly, you also see that the, the, if you look at the flanks and the tables, these are very wide armies here. They're kind of playing... The, the hill table that they have available to them, given those impassable pieces on the side, you know, they're, they're basically cut off a foot on the edge. So we're playing more or less on a four foot table here. Yeah. Um, and having said that, usually the, one of the first things you want to do when you go first is kind of roll down the flanks. And since that's not really an option here, I think I think Michael's very wisely chosen to go second saying, hey, I have no rush to push forward. I'm not really going to get a flank on you. I'm just going to hold my position, uh, fortify it, and kind of go from there. And, and sorry, as I'm saying, I mean, um, <laughs> Mark. Mark, Mark. Mark, yeah, so yeah, no. Mark yeah he's, he's sort of sitting in his little, like, as as you sort of said, we have this pyramid structure cutting off the board on one side ish, and we have the Sphinx cutting off the board on the other. He has really long movement on a lot of these units. And can if you sort of draw a line between those two, any battle line that sort of sits in between that has reasonably protected flanks and can strike out at any one of those token targets. So I think he's less worried about um, Michael just bombing forward, forward. and yeah. overwhelming him because if he does he's just sort of funneling himself into this corridor um so i know it it's obvious but it bears repeating it's fun to like the battlefield the sort of setups how that is completely can change the the tactics of the battle um and can make alpha strike armies or any army really just operate entirely differently like uh Michael's got some interesting choices on how much he wants to move forward and commit and cause he can't just surround him. He's, he's cut off from that. So 
I think we're going to see a little dancing for the first couple turns here. Like, I don't know if we'll see a full commit right away. Yeah, and that's but, that's apparent just in these few few moves that you see. Yeah, like, you're seeing it. Right. He's not like right up there yet at all. Yeah, exactly. He's kind of creeping up, which is kind of you know that's kind of exactly what Mark expected, right? He said, uh, you know, I'm gonna give you first turns because I know you're not gonna really push forward. So you see him all he's gonna do is just getting you know just creating a little bit of space with his units, pushing them up, um, you know, kind of staying out of most charge ranges just to, to be safe. Um, you know, I, one thing I think is gonna be very, very pivotal is this uh, right side of the battlefield um at least right from our point of view so uh, if you look at it, you have two rat fiends and the hack paws but mars committed the unit horde of uh, fiends there and i think the horde of fiends have a good chance of kind of breaking through that side so um right now that's where i'm kind of looking to see um how long or how how uh you know, how that side's gonna play out is mark gonna push it down the gut and just kind of go for it is he gonna you know try to just push forward and kind of play defensive there i mean um I will say that's the one area where I think the rat fiends going first and pushing up is going to be a little bit worrisome for Mark. But again, if he if he kind of is counter aggressive, I think he can really negate that. So I'm definitely paying attention to that side of the battlefield right now, at least as far as a, a early game action. So real question, um, I didn't know hack paws were a unit in second edition. I, I don't I think, think I, I think ever I added saw pretty late. Table. Yeah, they got added pretty late in one of the classic. They were things. not alone. Yeah, they, they definitely yeah, were. Like, eight, cock 18 or 19 edition? I think 18, right? Um, could be wrong about that, though. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fun unit. I've seen a couple lists that, that use them. Um, I know, uh, I'd say, like, you usually saw a unit or two. I don't think you ever saw six units, which is, you know, kind of hilarious. But um, Well, I'm looking, I'm looking at them, and it, it feels like one of those things that you look at, and you say, okay. Like melee four, defense four, speed nine, but a, a regiment's only 150 points. So right, like, their nerves terrible. Their defense ain't great, but their thunderous charge, nimble, vicious, at 150 points. That's that's getting into that. Definitely, and like Michael has gone in on it hard. That's getting right. in that cheap enough that you just throw enough out there and they get better in mass. So. Yeah, and it's nice because Michael's got that side with like quite a few of the the hills too, kind of. So maybe being able to boast that thunderous would be an option as well. Yeah, I mean the the reality yeah. of if he gets an unhindered charge, hitting on fours with two of those units at thunderous two, that's that hurts. That hurts yeah. anything that it's going to hit. Yeah, like I don't think either of them is really wrapping a huge amount of defense or nerve on their units, like. Yeah, I think about hot paws, it kind of takes two units to do the job of, of one, so to speak. Um, you know, like yeah. <laughs> like like Brendan said, they're 150 points, which is awesome, but they're not really like they don't really have calf stats when you look at it. You know, they have what 16 attacks like, and on fours. That's light, like you know, calf stats. yeah, as they, they hit about as as hard as sort of light to medium cavalry, and they have the defensive light to medium cavalry. So like you know, the, the, again, it's a very unique role, and it, I think it's fitting for for Ratkin to have that unit. Um, you know, in the, in the I think that's the smart thing that Michael's done is, is create a lot of redundancy with that unit. So he says, okay, well, you know, I'm not really expecting one unit to do the job anywhere. I'm going to have so many of them that I'm going to have combo charges and and yeah. flanks and things like that, that. That's what they really need to, to shine. And the the tangle gives them reliable bane chant. Um, he's got you know, yeah, we're not expecting any of these to blow up a unit on their own. That's not his expectation either. That's why he brought six of them. Um, exactly. So. Yeah. Oh, of, so. Patrick Zorro Allen was just saying in the chat that Hawkpaws were in the original Uncharted Empires, but were originally yeah. defense three with the same stats otherwise. Yeah, so I would say two, two things are unlocking them onto the battlefield. One, they got that buff to defense four. And yeah. two, most of the light shooting that would make defense three and defense four a horrible liability for a unit, especially of that size and height, is, is kind of out of the meta right now. So you don't have like, if you base your army around hack pods in version two, if you just saw an elf list in the field, it was gonna it was gonna auto win you. So um, it, we've seen this a lot across the board. Herd armies are strong right now. Night stalker armies are extra strong. Like all of these armies, uh, orcs, uh, great axes, and more axes. Like all of these sort of defense three and defense four units are are coming out of hiding in the in the new less. Uh, light shooting meta, so yeah. it's interesting. And he's also see. got the got the warlock with veil of shadows and the horn, 
Uh, so he can have a nine-inch stealthy bubble if he does run into someone who didn't get the memo and is still taking a lot of yeah. parts of units. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Probably yeah. probably better uh, to go. Uh, it'll probably see more use against like lightning bolt spam armies because you do <laughs> still see those. First bit of shots coming out of here. Um, it's like some lightning bolts. I see three hits and one wound. It looks like converted. So phantoms have yep. defense four. And he's able to get one wound on him. Not really going to do a whole lot there. Um, I think I'm a lot, but get, yeah. getting rid of the phantoms is pretty important because oh, those yeah. are the only things that can outspeed the hack paws on the other side of the table there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. As you talked about, the key, absolute yeah. key to Mark's game plan here is getting that unit prepared. Um, yeah. And again, the, the things that are dash 12, so they're really, really um, quite strong when it comes to like getting their roll done. They don't, you don't, you don't expect them to get wavered or anything like that. So uh, these lightning bolt shots, he's not really worried about. So. Uh, I see a mind fog going down, because <laughs> why not, right? Yeah. Um, and let's see here. Looks like uh, measurement is kind of making sure that he's where he wants to be with those carries who are obviously meant to go out and to die a glorious death. So we'll see see how it goes here. I am I am hoping this hack paw thing catches on to some degree, just because I want to see a bunch of Rat King cavalry on the board when we get back to playing with actual figures. I want to see all the all the glorious Rat King cavalry conversions. And I have a prediction that if people do that, you'll get the same people bitching about all Brocks and Rocks armies not really being dwarves, bitching that those armies aren't really rats. I, yeah, I don't rats, think you'll see that personally, but I mean, <laughs> that'd be <laughs> awesome. I mean, I, I hope so, right? If that's where the that. arguments go, let them go. Right. Exactly. exactly. And and um, so Scurry's actually took some pot shots here, it looks like, and, and doing some decent damage. Um, two to the fiends, and then I see another yep. two more, maybe. Oh, yep, up to four. So quick, quick shots. Fiend regiments there. Are, are only 13, 15. Yeah, yeah. So within the range of a waiver for sure. Um, yep. Definitely something that, um, you know, it's going to be a troublesome. The thing of fiends always have historically that very low waiver point. Um, so you kind of usually want to protect them. I think I love the regiments still, even even at their value, they're still low. Um, what say? Oh, Warbo. The old Warbo, Warbo. Kava. Like Rossi's favorite item, right? Um, that's right. So, I thought it was the flying hammer. Oh, that's right. Even worse than the Warbo. <laughs> that's right. That item's too good for Mike Rossi. My fault. Uh, is this how you can tell he's a better player than me? Is he remembered to use it on the first? Yeah, time? exactly. Right. Yeah, I would have definitely forgot. I already forgot about it. He just... Oh, is that a ten on the fiends? Um, that that would be a waiver. That would have been a. Uh, yeah, looks like he. Wait, wait, he rolled 10 on the Fiends is actually, yeah, would have been confusing. That would have been a waiver. I don't know if he's, oh, so are they waiver now? I, I, I'm trying to see. Because I feel like he rolled twice there. I'm, I'm actually got a little lost here as far as the Did roll. he kill him? Did would he kill him and have to re-roll? Like, no, it's Night Stalkers. There's no inspiring. There's, there's no there. inspiring yeah. there. Yeah, I don't, I guess they're waiver then. I guess, um, hmm, I'm... Let's I'm not get sure it the... order. Oh, maybe you know uh, what? I, I understand. No, no, no. So, I think the first roll was on the left unit because he did a mind fog. So the ten would have been on the phantoms in the middle. And that's eleven. Uh, so they're, yeah. they're actually fine. And then on the right, he rolled the the, the six. So the six. Uh, okay, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. So is that my, we didn't see was that the mind fog? It's hard to remember which unit was taking the check there. So yeah, yeah right. Um, glad we were able to piece that together. And it looks like Mark's wasting no time to kind of see what charges he wants to make. Um, Michael didn't give him a whole lot, but you know. It's going to come down to these these tricky little charges and combats, and and you know we're in turn one here already, so you see you see the action coming hot, you know this is this is getting in there. So now um, well, I find it interesting that Mark sort of said this inspiration started from Eric Trowbridge's Masters list. Um, yeah, because without saying that, I don't see any of the parallels. But once he says it, you're like, okay. It didn't end up being the same army, but I can see how it started with a, a concept of, you know, yeah, big, low to medium defense, you know, hitty units protected by multiple characters and sort of a chaff line that just guards them. But that, I don't know, I guess part of me is that's almost every army. Um, yeah, 
I mean, that's <laughs> good armies in general, right? I mean, if you're getting inspired to list, you might as well be the one that won the Masters, right? I think that's a, that's a fair starting point. Uh, the way I see the that interpretation of that list here is, like you said, I see the two big hammers, right? You got the Reapers, mm -hmm. three mini hammers in, in, oh, excuse me, the two big hammers being the uh, Fiends, and then the three mini hammers being the Reapers. Um, yeah. It's really the same thing, right? He did the more axes and the, and the great axes. So he kind of combined yeah. those two together, right? So um, a lot less chat than you would see out of the Orc list. Um, so that's kind of, I think, one of the more interesting factors that, that you know, Ken's list sustain. I mean, the advantage of the Phantom Chaff is that they're quicker and they're obviously a little bit tougher. So, you know, he really has to make good use out of them. And I think they're, and this might sound like an idiot, but the Phantoms are, they used, believe me, correct me if I'm wrong, they used to shamble, I think. Um, they're, they now no longer shamble as far as I can tell. I don't remember if they no, used they to. No, they don't shamble not. anymore. I think they used to, right? So, so I'm kind of looking at them. I kind of forgot the, the, how fast they can really move and get out there. So you can really block them up if you want to because you can just fly that straight 20 and, and kind of get in the way. So, um, you know, there's a lot of options really when it comes to those units. I mean, he can do so much. So it's me, uh, you know, I'm not surprised to see him kind of taking a while already to, to kind of figure out what he wants to do with them. Yeah. And looking at those Reapers that he's got in the Night Stalker list, those items on them, like ow is all i'm gonna say like having blessings from the gods and then brew of sh strength and stuff on them i think that's really a yeah anyways i'm like talking to myself now just mumbling it's away. a lot he, no, that's, that's, a a lot. Anyway, that's what i'm going with here I mean, that's, that's reaper you should see regiment infantry and is there sort of this mental i think you know um this mental you know like understanding where you're like okay they can only do so much damage to me that, that Reaper breaks that mold pretty substantially. They're going to do a lot more damage than you're ready for if you're just thinking they're a regular re regiment of infantry. So I think yeah. those items are very, very relevant, Ashley. I think that's a very good point that, that you know, a lot of pain coming out of those units that you wouldn't otherwise expect it. Um, so I think, I mean, they can pretty much kill anything on the board here they, they touch, um, yeah. except for maybe a Rat Fiend. Um, but yeah, that's, that's actually going to be a very big deal, I think, in, in this game. You know, Michael just the, can't take charges. The really... The, the trade-off, right, is that they have lower nerve than a horde. They put out basically like horde damage. Um, <laughs> They're like soul reavers. They just have one less defense yeah. and one less crushing for like what forty points less. And the the thing about them is that w the the basic trade-off you're getting there is um, you have a smaller footprint, so you're more maneuverable, but you're weaker and you can't take as much of a punch. But when you look at the amount of attacks and potential damage in those three units set up right next to each other, that is a that is an absolute buzzsaw. Um, well, and also there's the phantoms in front, so there's a good chance that like he could get off that clean first charge with those, yeah. and then you're not worrying about taking that first punch. So we'll see. That's the game. The game that's, is that's gonna be, the plan, I guess. We'll see how the game is yeah. going to be. How much work those reapers actually get to do? Right. Um, how many charges they get to do? Right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm a big fan of it. I know when I played Abyssals, I was a big fan of the unit like the Succubi, which are a similar kind of role where they just really just can't oversell unit. These do it even better. So they have a crushing one base and those items. I mean, they're just absolutely going to shred everything they touch. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I call them, I think I called mini hammers earlier, which is kind of insulting because these guys are actually insane the amount of damage they can do. Yeah. Um, yeah. You one's, know. one's got pure strength, one's got the sharpness, and one's got elite. I do want to point out one thing, one clever thing that I think Mark's done over here. He's, he's moved this Dread Fiend up to be kind of flush with the terrain. Uh, and I think that puts this unit of Hack Paws in its flank oh, so yeah. that they, they, they can't actually get a legal charge yeah. on them. Uh, where, and I think these, these Hack Paws might be out of range. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Yeah, so they are. They so are, so yep. this Dread Fiend has actually been able to move up and kind of cut off that side. Yeah, and I'm um, assuming... I'm assuming Michael left that hack paw unit where it is because it still has the option of funneling to the inside of that terrain and not the outside. But um, yeah, it it is interesting to me that he didn't move them up at all. Uh, I know that would have been committing down one one avenue, but we'll see. Well, it's also yeah, interesting because they're playing it with three impassables because they interpreted that bottom yeah. left piece as impassable as well. So there's no second uh, difficult. Just three impassables, which really narrows down that left flank. There's not a lot yeah. of space to go. I completely agree with all you guys. I mean, I think I, I, I give Mark a lot of credit for take, you know giving taking the space that was given to him. Yeah, and that that could be a big factor because those hack paws are kind of stuck in there. Um, that left unit, you know, against the rubble there, they're they're, they're you know. They can't charge, and they're, they're, you have to essentially move up really far just to get to get out of the range now. That dread fiend. Um, or, or move back a lot. I mean, uh, he, either way, it's not really a, a ideal position. So, 
Um, definitely a, a cheeky little move there by Mark. Very smartly played. Um, and, and again, I expect more of that coming up here when he kind of gets through these some of these flyers. Yeah. And, and, stuff. and we know we know Mark is a good he's a good solid player. So a little bit about the background of both both these guys. Um, Mark was in Texas playing before. He comes from a background of sort of competitive war machine and hordes where he played like pretty seriously in that scene, which is a very competitive scene. Um, but don't hold it against him too much. He seems like a nice guy Fine. most of the time. Um, and uh, he's one of those players I would put where it's like, if he lived in certain other regions, he would be a master's player. But because he's made the mistake of living in Texas and now the Midwest, um, <laughs> he's just, it's, it's tough. Like, it's tough to get on those teams for sure. Um, and then Michael Piercy is also a really, really strong player, comes up with really interesting lists. Um, has won some some big tournaments and finished high at some big tournaments. And uh, I think he made Masters the year they uh, hosted, the South hosted, and then dropped to um, do the commentary along with, like, Pat Allen and, and some other folks. Um, I think it was Matt, Matt Carmack doing, the, doing it as well. But I think he gave up his Masters spot to host. Um, which again just shows the strength of that kind of region in which like half their team basically dropped to run masters and run commentary and they still won the team portion of masters that year. Um, so both of those guys being in Texas, the fact that you haven't seen them really at masters is, is no knock on their skill level. They're really good players um, just sort of living in the wrong States. <laughs> So. 100% agreed. Yeah, these are two top top level players here. I don't think you'll find a better game out there um, in this match. And really, really glad we got able to cast it. So, um, you know, yeah. expecting big things. Now I see movement. Spicy phantom right, movement but, alert. Yeah. Again, <laughs> uh, taking advantage of this whole flank, the idea of blocking your flank, right? Um, he's really, uh, you know, I, again, I thought he had to be, if there's one place he had to be aggressive, I knew it was going to be on the right side. So I think Mark's done exactly that. Um, push forward here then a nice maneuver to prevent both you know the, the drift fiends in the back not drift fiends, I mean the, the fiends in the back from being charged so they right now can't the, the rat fiends can't get around them the hack paws can't get around the dread fiends so you know the the uh fiends are coming in and they're going to deliver some pain so you know that's exactly what he needs to do get in there get to start doing some damage or clean up some units um we'll have to see how mike responds to it but um definitely you know pushing that chess piece forward saying you know it's going to be on your your move next and those for the for anyone watching that didn't wasn't here when we went through the breakdown of what every unit is it's sort of hard to read at least on my screen maybe others are better um those two units that the phantoms are blocking in that right hand side what are those again me and rat fiends me and rat fiends yep. Ooh. so and a uh, brood enforcer right yeah behind him yeah yeah and uh, the heck balls because, over there on the right, right. So because also, they're not nimble, uh, the rat fiends can't get around. Um, not that I don't even know if they have the range for it, but they're just kind of stuck uh, facing that unit. And, and you know, my, my guess is they'll probably, you know, move forward and kind of eat it. But, you know, they, they yeah, they do have strider at least. So. Yeah, they have exactly. So they're, they're the thing that you don't want to smack into your front line. Right. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's the one you really have to avoid. Um, and I think, you know, Mark so far is doing a good job of at least holding him back for a turn while being aggressive. I think that was one of the few ways to do it. Now, the, the only downside is that, you know, Mark's army is pretty elite. So he doesn't have, you know, once he loses a unit of phantoms to, to the Raffians, he's kind of stuck. So he, he's, I hope he's kind of in his head played this enough or is going to get them enough support to kind of make sure they don't get trapped there is the weight of units, right? So you look on the right, um, yeah. Michael Percy has at least, what, four or five units there. So. Um, you know, he's to four to three units. There's, you know, eventually one's going to get the charge off on the fiends and going to do some damage. So yeah, that's, he that's what he has to watch for. He's and and we talked about this in the other stream and all the time. Like it's a peace trading game, and what we mean by that is that each thing you give up, each resource that you sort of uh, give up in a situation or commit in a situation needs to earn you something if you're going to try and win the game. And that can be a, a more advantageous position somewhere else. That could be a charge right behind it. It could be all kinds of stuff, but he's giving up those phantoms. Um, he's offering them up. They are not going to survive a double charge. <laughs> um, so put it, them on a platter and like sprinkled some salt and it's, it, it's right. entirely yeah. about like, it, right? what, yeah. What is he buying for that cost? What is he getting? 
Um, is it time so that he can overwhelm on the other side? Is it to set up a, a better situation here? That's the thing that's always interesting to see because, you know, if you give those up for for no real gain, then he doesn't have enough units to to play that. <laughs> so. Yep, totally. And that's where it takes that level of like kind of planning ahead, right? You you, you know, every player, even your new player, should be looking at least one turn ahead, right? Thinking, okay, my opponent's going to do this. What does that leave me, right? So, you know, let's play that exercise real quick here on the right side, right? So let's assume that Michael's going to charge his Rat Fiends at those um, phantoms right in their face. They're going to kind of left there. The hack paws, you kind of have to assume, are, are going to either charge the Dread Fiend um, or move up. Either way, they don't, you know... Either way, they're going to kind of be left in the front there, hanging. So the fiends, um, you know, they're going to have probably realistically the option of charging either the hack paws, the rat fiends, the mutant rat fiends, excuse me, or these the uh, scourges if they decide to push forward. So you know, you you know, you say oh, I'm okay charging one of those units and kind of you know being left to deal with them. Um, that's the question that Mark's probably you know should have been asking himself before he moved those fandoms into place there. And um, and that that unit of fiends in the top right is that the J boots. Yes. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. So they're oh, not worried about the wall. Very good. Yeah, so that's a big wall, right? So. <laughs> yeah, sure but, but but also the uh, mutant rat fiends are speed uh, seven, so they they are yep. in, are already in range of this dread fiend. Uh, so yeah, if if he wanted to get anything in range over here, he kind of needed to to right. block off the rat fiends with something, just so we can get yeah. a turn to get Absolutely. get in position. And as we're talking here, as, as I kind of expected, he brought over some more help on that right side with the Reapers, right? So, I, you know, I, I think he analyzed the way I did. Said, so, hey, I'm a bit outnumbered here. Um, if you want to break through my my phantoms and kind of um, go into, into, you know, kind of post up on my fiends, you're going to also have to deal with the Reapers as well. So um, they're very well placed. Now, they're going to have to deal with that wall, so they are probably going to hindered, but they do so much damage, they don't really care, right? So they're just going to, you know, be able to just go through that and still do a ton of damage, so... Yeah, it's still, well, it's still be 25 went... attacks on fours with elite. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, exactly. They're going to come in with a lot of pain. So there again, yeah, you know, that's the advantage of, of kind of, you know, putting your units on stairways like that is that, you know, things like terrain is like, who cares, right? And, you know, one of them's got the, the brew of sharpness, you know, that that's basically a free caterpillar, right? In the way that it just, you go to terrain, you still hit on threes, right? You don't really care. So, um, you know, he basically has caterpillar three times his list, if you think of that way, you know, Strider. And and putting him on regiments like this, he's avoiding uh, paying the horde tax for some of those items. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a very good point. Yeah, I was looking at Mark's list. You know, I think we talked about it in the last stream, like someone not buying as many items. And Mark's actually looks like it spent like about 120 points in items. So definitely spread the love in items. Yeah, and I, I do worry a bit um, as far as making sure he gets the charges he wants. Um, one thing that I think he he's invested a lot in is these um, life leech characters. These um, Excuse me, I think they're called soul soul drainers or sorry soul drinkers. There you are. So th those are the ones when I looked at this list, I, I kind of was was curious to see what kind of role they'll actually play. Um, you know, I think those are points he could have better spent. Oh, I don't say better spent, but he could have spent into more chaff pieces. You know, to kind of make it more of a, a chaff list where, where just ensuring that your your reapers get in combat. Instead, they're kind of more of a grindy unit. They're gonna give life leech to the reapers. Um, you know, they're kind of gonna maybe throw them in the way i mean i, I do like they do serve a dual, uh, double role where they kind of have duelists and can hunt characters so they have that going for them but um but i do like that he's being aggressive as, as i said he's kind of pushing them forward here which i think is, is actually very very crucial because um he's gonna really need to get value out of these guys here you know they're not good enough just sit there and kind of get a wound back and throw a few wounds in a combat that, that's not enough of these guys they, they need to really get in the way lock things up and, and do that and, and i don't know they're gonna you know i don't know if they'll be able to do that or not i mean they're not I don't think they're mighty, right? So they're kind of a uh, one of those characters you can kind of ignore. I mean, yeah, they have a lot of attacks. Yeah. So you can probably hope to get a wound in, right? They'll get um, a wound. Yeah, so if they anything, get a wound... But, anything yeah. on this board. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so if they get yeah, a wound off, they're, they're so, effectively so mighty. But um, but it is in. The only way that's going to work is if he pushes the pace with them. And, and so um, I do yeah, like so there's the way two, he did it. There's like two sort of things, and one of them is the... Um, if we look at this as him starting with a framework of Eric Trowbridge's master's winning list that had six individual cheapish characters uh, running around in it, it had three, three crudgers and three um, crushers. Um, these are sort of filling that crusher role. Um, sure. Osh crudger kind of in between because he had one set mounted, one set not. So he's sort of using the, the dread fiends <laughs> and the, the soul drinkers as those kind of 
utility characters that you know ground flyers in your backfield beat up gargoyles do do all those kind of little things but then they can also create your charge lanes um and really help these kind of regiments and hordes that need to hit at exactly the right time and sometimes multi-charge you know hit, hit the right thing i mean yeah. And that's why my concern comes with their speed. It's like they're only speed six, right? So like, yeah. how do you make sure then the right position to do all those things, right? It's it's a little trickier than your your. They're sixty five points. You don't. Right. You don't <laughs> you use right. them as much as you can. Sure. Yeah. That's, yeah exactly. That's and that's that's going to show the sign of of whether Mark, you know, I don't know how comfortable he's been. He sounds like he's been playing this list in previous rounds. I don't know how much experience he has with this list exactly. Um, been playing it wrong in previous rounds with that right swap. right you know, those 20 <laughs> points i should have had right that, that's gonna cost me right um but it, we'll see how you know he's able to kind of um come through with, with the the use of those units because i think it is going to come down to those guys you know if they can buy the reapers an extra turn of combat that's absolutely game changing for the because they, they you know extra turn of combat for them it's basically another unit dead so that's you know that's what he's going to need badly on those guys and it's, yeah. it's not a big deal, especially in this one, but in other games, they do have Duelist. So, you know, five attacks on threes, crushing strength one, going up to, what, ten attacks on threes, crushing strength one. If if they ever do get a hold of other people's sort of individuals running around, they can do some some work on them. It's just not, not relevant to this matchup so much. Totally, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I, I do love Duelist at all. Like, I do think Duelist is an important rule to have. Um in the meta of things like goblin heroes and, and other heroes that kind of run around, um, you really need a character that can kind of pick them up in one go. That can just, you know, if you, if you don't double triple your attacks, you're just not going to kill them quick enough to, to deal with the rest of the stuff in the list. So I, I do like that this guy at five attacks with duelist, he'll pretty much do, you know, a guaranteed five or six wounds to a goblin, which is enough to kind of take a good crack at killing them if they're not, you know, inspired and rallied enough and everything. So um, I do think they're in a pretty good sweet spot. So, um, yeah, no, I, I like it. I like it. Um, again, I just want to see if he really gets the value out of them that that he needs to with this list. So, um, we'll just have to kind of wait and see there. All right, starting out here, top of turn two, Michael has moved one of his hackball units, not not into the dread fiend like we thought he might do, but instead has moved mm -hmm. it into the flank of both dread fiend uh, and the fiends with the J boots over here on the right side, out of their arcs, threading their flanks, and sitting on an objective, which is pretty good play, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. Hackpaw's yep. doing nimble things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not a, it's not something you're used to seeing when you see a regiment of, of cavalry. So, you know, that's a heads up play, I think, from, you know, Mike to do that and to kind of move in there. Um, again, this is, to me now, it's curious is what he's going to do with that unit of phantoms now. I, I assume he's going to charge it, but maybe he's got something else sneaky up his sleeve where you can kind of maybe ignore them or, or, or maybe not totally double charge them, maybe charge them once and kind of like, grind him out a bit and kind of slow down, um, you know, Mark's advance. I think that's, that's kind of the big question mark is what do you do with that? Cause if you just go in and delete them, then you're not the, you know, face this counter charge, right? That that's kind of what, um, Mark's been setting up. So what's you know. the, what's the ranges on those? Can we get the range arcs on those fiends? Yeah. Fiends? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Where, so, they're 16, I think. So yeah, right. they're sixteen. So, eight, looks, yeah. so yeah, so sixteen to them is, is effectively, uh, if you see that third red line, I think um, that's fifteen. Yeah. I think so. It's gonna be one past that. So kind of right into the woods, more or less, right into the edges of the woods. I think if I'm reading that correctly. Yeah, he can get he can get either of the uh, rat, the rat fiends. fiends where they currently stand. So if they move charge forward, they're most definitely gonna still be within range of the fiends. Um, yeah. So got... my my sort of thought here is hit those phantoms with one rat fiend and set everything else up as as the trap like you can come in and take your chances on that one rat fiend but we're gonna surround you oh yeah he really wants to lure the fiends to to the bottom side of the wall so that anything that charges won't be hindered because they've got they've got j boots so if they've got to run across the wall they don't care but like rats really don't want to have to attack something hindered if they can avoid it yeah the fiends yeah. are the rat fiends are fine um, it's the, the rest. Rat of the, are it's the rest of the nonsense, but right, and, and not only that, but those hack paws won't like it. That those hack paws won't like it. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, and that's. I think. Um, well, I'll say that oh, here comes a yeah. charge. I see coming in, in probably the enforcer. Oh. Right, in the whole whole family's coming in. So it looks like so. Yep. Oh, all right. So. We triple it. Yeah, yeah, looks like he said that. Triple triple charge, yeah. 
So he wants him off the table. That which is fine. I respect that. That you know, anytime you yep. kill a unit, you you kind of should. That that's a good starting point for Kings of War. I think in general. Um, so, um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see how he repositions them <laughs> after the combat. Um, yeah, I do find it kind of interesting that that over here he he did on the other side he did charge uh, another unit of phantoms with that brute enforcer that does have mm -hmm. inspiring and that is his inspiring source on that side of the table. So he's kind of opened up by by throwing inspiring within range of mind thirst. Come on, okay. come on, guys. Let's get them. Oh, wait. Let's right. get them. Yeah, it's a very interesting thing there, right? So um, one is the, uh, you know, the inspiring piece. If that inspiring piece dies, um, that's actually inspiring for both characters gone. They're both, excuse me, both uh, players gone. So uh, basically, you know, I can't can't steal inspiring if there's no inspiring around, right? So maybe he's sure. thinking, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to hit you first here. So I want to I wanna make sure that you don't have inspiring and, and also slow you down at the same time. So kind of a so dual purpose there. This is the meme with the guy tapping his head going, can't, right. can't, can't steal inspiring if I don't have any. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right. It's a little bit of a prisoner's dilemma going on. Right? Like, yeah, the only risk yeah. I ride is, is uh, if your fish stuff dies <laughs> to, 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 in their roles, then you're going to be uh, you're having problems. But again, so, I, I like it. So back to this triple charge. Um, yes. Because they are different base sizes, um, is he giving himself a little more freedom of movement to potentially pivot um, slash reposition after the charge by slamming that that character in between the two, um, sort of allowing the character to go forward while they go back and like sort of preventing double ups and that kind of thing. It it feels like there's some stuff you can options you can play with post victory on this charge um, by having that that extra extra unit in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely have to throw the enforcer forward to get him out of the way of the rat beans. And then this one, if he backs him up, like then maybe nothing can get to it between that that enforcer and the scurriers next to it. Well the thing um, is he's yeah. he's 50 mil, they're hundred mil deep. Their pivot point is right at his back corner. They could, I believe, my, my math could be microscopically off, but they could then pivot a certain amount like with that corner still touching their corner and angle a little, I don't, I don't know what that gets him, but it's, you know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And it definitely think, gives him space to work. Yeah. I mean, I think if you had to consider if he's using enforcers as, as kind of chaff, so to speak, right in the other side of the board, maybe he's thinking the same thing here. I'm going to, I'm going to D6, I got forward, hope to get as big as possible roll. And if he goes up enough, I mean, if you get a good like four to five, I think I think he'll kind of be in the way where those rappings can back up and kind of um, prevent some arcs on the fiends to kind of get it in there or, or pivot. Yeah. Because again, the fiends only have one one pivot to get around them. So, um, you know, fifty mil is still big enough to kind of get in the way of a lot of stuff here. So we'll kind of have to. See and it might force him. It might force him into the right hand, our right hand rat fiend, which is beneficial or. Or et cetera, you know. Totally, yeah. I mean, the hack paws, yeah. they are nimble, so they're they're like, you can't stop them, right? So that's that's one thing that's very very cheeky here. Is like even let's say the drifty wants to turn around, he can't charge the the hack paws. Let's say he wants to just get in their way, he can't really do it. So he has, he moves their way, they're just gonna nimble around him, right? So um, that's one thing that's very interesting about hack paws being in this kind of position. This is actually kind of exactly where they want to be. Um, it's kind of waiting on the wings here. Um, only thing that really hinder them right now is that. Well, like both figuratively and the, literally uh is the wall the wall is kind of going to be the thing that they don't want to deal with so if if um, yeah. you know if i'm if i'm mark right here we probably trying to look to take a charge where those hack paws are negated by that wall um if they're going to get something that's that's pricey so well i All think right. also having that piece of impassable there that sphinx like maybe mark can use that a little bit to help just to like block up where that nimble can go um but yeah like yeah, you can you can definitely do something there, right? Because you can. You yeah, can I think there's it. something there. For sure. Um, I see some rolls coming out here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Some pew pews. Michael's moved on to shooting. Yep. So pews. taking pot shots that takes. I see two more wounds on the fiends. I believe. Dude, they're up to six. They're they are six. very much in that that danger zone. You know that uh, getting getting wavered potential, which would actually be pretty crippling for his getting in the way. And and Mark, I think, kind of realizes that saying, saying, "Well, oh wait, um, sorry, some more attacks coming." I was like, "So heaven hits." Okay, so now there's an, now they're probably just dead. So okay, I did take back what I just said. Uh, so they just <laughs> took a lot more wounds. I think Are they up to. Yeah, going to shoot on. The, yeah, they're up to eleven. So now uh, Scary's going to shoot at some phantom. Yo. Yep. So 
So they're up to two there. That's not so bad. Yeah, so they're, the Phantoms are still looking pretty good. Um, yeah. And they're still inspiring right now, too, so they're very And now good. they're inspired. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if you're counting on a hot roll, then you're definitely probably not going to get it now. So, um, again, you're probably not counting on it, right? So so it's not a big deal. But um, let's see here. These pot shots really, really doing some work here, honestly. Kill, killing a regiment of fiends is a big deal. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, this is something I ran into a bunch when I was playing Undead and and also with Oryx, it's like when you have no shooting, <laughs> yeah, just the exactly. minimal amount of, of opponent shooting feels so bad because there's yeah, nothing absolutely. you can do about it except throw units yeah. into combat, but you're this glass hammer that can't throw anything away. So you're just, I think this is actually something I sort of expected from the Northern Alliance Army in the last cast to, to sort of do and chip away and stuff, but this is just the huge difference between shooting at uh, Night Stalkers and shooting at Basilian Iron Resolve healing, you know, yes. sort of. Yeah. You're, being, you're seeing this damage stack up and start to become potentially relevant. Absolutely. Personally. And as we say that, Lightning Bolt comes in here, does, uh, I think, three more wounds on them. That's, um, that's another wound, yeah. Plus another wound from uh, up to six. a Lightning Bolt. Yeah. So six is very dangerous. How's that first That'll turn be. looking now? So they are totally dead. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's Goodbye. One thing, yeah. We didn't talk about really when we talked about his list and, and the shooting potential here. Um, very impressed yeah. actually with, with that sort of, you know, something you don't even think about it really when you play this kind of list. I, I wouldn't really give a second thought. Granted, I'm used to playing kind of tougher armies. So it was these kind of shooting I don't pay attention to. But, you know, when you're playing a fragile list, you, you have to, you know, you have to count for these kind of, you know, these little pot shots that are going to add up. So just like that, two units are gone. And, and you know, now Martians are super exposed, absolutely sitting back there with no yeah. chat whatsoever to speak with. And um, those are the, the Reapers just like totally, yeah, that's the Reapers that are exposed too, which yeah. is the one yes. thing you don't really want to take that first hit. Yeah, exactly. and this isn't this isn't to knock anything or, or but to keep going back. And this is one of those big differences where Trowbridge's orc list has so much redundancy. It was just like a million orclings. Mm -hmm. You're shooting at those orclings and taking them off the table and it doesn't even matter. Here you're right. removing this chaff before it's done its job, and it it might really matter. Absolutely, I mean exactly. Stealthy sometimes is not enough, especially because um, you know stealthy is great as a rule for nice stalkers, but thing is that um, their defense is is also very low. So you know really when you look at an average amount of shots, you're pretty much on par with everyone else because you know if you take your standard units to defense five, take a stealthy units to defense four. Um, yeah, you're getting minus one on the shots, but you get you lose that defense right away in the next roll. So, I mean, yeah, it's great against War Machines, who, who you take a five to six, but against this sort of this regular shooting, nice talkers are quite vulnerable to that with their low defense. So, um, you know, here as we uh, as we're talking here, of course, the unit fans just absolutely just evaporates into thin air. And so, and lightning yeah. bolts don't lightning bolts don't care about stealthy, right? Um, I think they no, do. I don't think they do. I mean, um, unless it's an FAQ, I'm looking in the book. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, then you're you're correct. Then uh, yeah, because so, I, I had like a little lightning bolt in one of my lists, and I played against some night stalkers, and it did work. Against, against cover, they care. You're right, but not against yeah. stealthy. Yes. Yeah, so, so this is this is the shooting that sticks. Yeah, that's exactly um, right. Yeah. Shame on me. So for not here he's that he's moved that uh, brute enforcer forward like we kind of expected him to, and yep. moving the rat fiends back to get them out of. Trouble. So now those fiends aren't going to be able to fit in between that enforcer and those couriers. Get that yep. one. We'll see what he does with the other rapping. Yeah. So this guy, this guy's the one that I think is maybe a little bit more prone to getting hit. Oh, okay. And as we say that, he's going to. Oh. oh. He's thinking. He's thinking about. Yeah. He's going to play some angle here. In a bad position. Yeah. Um, right. Because those fiends, I think, are the big threat right now to. Michael's line, like Michael might have to deal with, and I think what is oh, okay. So he's got a little dummy, dummy yeah, model, kind of proxy. Yeah, yep, yeah, kind of proxy model. He wants to make sure he, he's letting those fiends get a good charge off. Because those fiends with with a couple good charges could definitely put a put a. So this know, is a hole here. this is a little bit of uh, advice for for new players or players going to uh, an event or playing or even just in friendly games. This comes in useful is to throw throw a blank base. Um, and either move the blank base instead of the real unit or put the blank base where the unit was and do all of your theoretical moves and what fits where and all the tricky stuff while keeping a sort of clearly marked original unit place that you can always go back to. Um, and then only once you're sure and you can, you can use that to like agree with your opponent, like, Hey, if it's here, can you do this? Can you do that? 
you can get all that out of the way in just a friendly way and then you move the unit and it saves you from doing like weird take backs or like where did this unit start and all that horrible awkwardness so um even in ub he's using it so yeah i used to like love just like i always mark my bases before i moved but once i've like started taking the empty base i find it really easy and a lot clearer for your opponent too yeah i love it no questions it's, asked yeah it allows you to sort of theory out stuff it allows you to sort of show the steps of what you're trying to do so if there's any issues with what you're trying to do like oh no that that pivot is too far or you can't pivot that many times or whatever you can kind of walk through all the steps and agree on it and then they might be feeling bad that you outsmarted them, but they can't feel bad about the the rules of how it happened. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, and it's... I'm also like a really visual. If you're a visual person, like some people, I swear they can look at the table and like see how everything works, like and where everything can go, just like in their head. But I'm a very visual person, so like not being able to see where it's going to go. Um, yeah, the amount really of times with players, you've sort of said like, "I'm going to charge this flank," and they look at you like, "What the fuck are you thinking?" And then you're like. It does this, it pivots here, it moves here, connects this corner and and lines up. And they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You got me. Yeah. <laughs> so I think so I think what happened here with this other mutant rat fiend is he was trying to figure out how to turn it such that um the fiends were still in the front and mm -hmm. this enforcer was was too far forward to allow them to fit into the front. But when yeah. he brought the measuring stick over to check it, there was still enough of a corner there for yeah. the fiends to hit. So he just punted and said, the hell with it, I'll stay where I am and you can just come get. Okay, so you had to give up it. the unit there, it sounds like. Um, again, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you guys, by the way, on the blank bases. I mean, I think it's one of those things that I actually completely agree with you. Actually, I, even myself, I still use a lot the visualization. I need the visualization of, of kind of where that final position is going to be, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, here yeah. we're talking about like, oh, you can know where this guy's going to be. But when you actually put a base on the table, it, it helps it, it helps every player, I think, regardless of how much experience you have of kind of getting that final position down. And also, it's very, very quick, too. I mean, I think you get a couple bases, you throw them out, and, and just before you move your unit, you just put the base down and there you go I just, oh yeah uh, look we're seeing them yeah some fancy ones with little handles and you can just kind of pick up and pivot around so yeah so you, you kind of i highly recommend those guys whether it's a, it's a fancy 3d printed one like he has or just this, a blank base um you're gonna definitely benefit a lot by by doing that you know before so fancy so, i mean exactly. you can even just like cut a piece of cardboard to be the exact same shape if you absolutely, like yeah. i've used a piece of paper before yeah. absolutely yeah i mean i used to yeah. like kind of draw my hands like initially like i just kind of do one of, one of these like kind of like put on the table and kind of like <laughs> all right they're there. like and i i do that a lot and i i, I you know if i ever forget my base at home or something i'll, I'll still do that because it just helps me visualize where they're going to be and, and you know i'm looking at angles i'm looking at blanks you know you kind of want to have that idea in your head of, of what you know you don't want to get flanked unexpectedly so you really want to have a pretty good picture of where you are and so Think. Well, that's also like with the flanks. That's why I like love my laser pointer. It's like yes. my godsend. Yeah, and it makes a clear opponent too. I think it's a big one, right? So you put him here. You go, okay, I'm here. I'm, I'm not gonna get flanked here. And that kind of you know that way there's no kind of like gotcha moment. Not, not that it is a gotcha moment sometimes, but like you know it's one thing to, to have your opponent charge somewhere and be somewhere, and you go, oh, I think I have a flank on you here. It's like well, okay, well let's you know if if he if you had the base, he, he would have been able to see that ahead of time and kind of been able to prevent that. But um, oh, looks like yeah. it's Mark's turn two here. So yeah, I'm feeling. Yeah, it's been there for a little bit. I think he's thinking. To be I'm honest. feeling very disrespected by this bottom of turn two counter. Like, yep. <laughs> How do you think Sorry. I felt last week? Oh no, just Sorry. sit like this. This is better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, quick, I mean, quick, quick shout out for anybody that's interested. The little handle part of these are available on Thingiverse. I think Nick Williams designed them and put them up there. Uh, right. And the the actual bases are just. It's just a, a square, right? You just draw a square and tinker cat or something and then print them. If you have a printer or you know somebody that has a printer, like these are super handy. I just keep a whole bag yeah. of them in my gaming stuff and take them with me. Yeah, those are those are absolutely amazing looking. Um I kinda hate them because they look so good. Um I I do blank bases because I'm from California and every tournament that basically matters I have to fly to. Um and uh I just like having a big bag of blank bases that's every size I need. Uh, and once I start putting fancy handles and, and stuff into it, it, it takes up as much room as my army and that's not gonna, that's not gonna fly. So you can use anything. It all works. Your version yeah. looks much prettier. Uh, my version transports well. <laughs> yep. And see some action here. It looks like, um, looks like some charges going out. I, um, I believe he declared that as a triple charge on that enforcer, and I guess he's he's hoping that when when the combat is over, he'll be able to turn these fiends to uh, yeah, no, nope, maybe, nope, nope. nope, uh, maybe not, maybe not those that fiend nope. board with Pathfinder. Um, yeah, that's against it. 
then decided it was overkill, I guess. Can we uh, zoom in just a little bit on that side? Just because that's where we're, that's fine, yeah. Just because it's kind of hard to see some of the smaller units. Thank you. There's also been some comments in the chat about people's various impressive Corona beards. And oh, yeah. that raises the question, Ashley, like not a team player. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm, uh, I'll have to get it on for. I'll just like mascara it on for next time. Yeah, It'll be that's perfect. the expectation here. I I'd actually prefer you didn't because after after we did like the first one of these, uh, and I sat down to, to to watch it afterwards to see how it turned out. You know, Robin was watching and she was like, "You're not very big on diversity, are you? It's all a bunch of dudes with dark hair and beards <laughs> commenting." And I'm like, "Thank you for pointing that out, dear. I don't. Uh, it's 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 what our hobby looks like. Sorry." Um, so it, like, it's, yeah. it's one of those where you're like harsh, but fair, but, but fair. fair. Also, I see I am the token, the token girl now. That's fine. Been doing that long enough. Yeah. Kings of War. Yeah, I'm the token drunk guy here. So, uh, you know, we all have Ooh, our I could get more whiskey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think all mine Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I got some nice before. whiskey when we were down in the States for masters and I really like it. Yeah. I think I'm on the farthest behind time zone of our casters and it's already past noon here so yeah day drink it up i mean yeah. where else do we have to go exactly right here it's a sunday we're definitely gonna have some day drinking going on here um playing kings of war that you know to me kings of war and beer go hand in hand so that that's kind of like my uh you know that's how i get to the deep analysis here is to you know embrace that right. you know buzz. The, the balmer curve Exactly. That's that's the only way I do well in tournaments is to you know. So right now, the on on YouTube, the the folks watching the the rat contention is definitely increasing. We have I a few that. people coming in. Exactly. Just rats, rats, rats. Rats and rats are looking good right now too. So I think you guys um yeah, should be satisfied so far. One thing I'd be curious to check in, Mike, if you can zoom in on the left side is um how the dread fiend lines up to the hack paws um both both units really just to kind of see what options are going to be there um. It looks like he has range, I believe. What's his, his speed? Eight, I think, right? Eight, yeah. So it looks like he has range on both units. What arcs do we have? On? I, obviously, the one on the left should be a frontal. What about I, think, I, th I think he's a little short on this this back one. Oh, okay. But what sorry. about the second hack pause there? Is that gonna, would that be a flank? Because I think he would fit, right? Because it's a 50 mil. Yeah. So the arc looks like a frontal, I believe, right? So. No, I think back. that's... Go back, back to the, the yeah. So it's like, yeah, a frontal, yeah. Yeah, so definitely a frontal there. So he he just backed up. Looks like he kind of did, which is still great, by the way. Uh, a dread fiend charge in the front is, is, I think, a really really good move here. Yeah. Um, just because a it locks them down, gets away their thunderous. They're they're again these guys, they barely hit hard when they're charging with their thunderous. Without they they're they're you know kind of a wet noodle status. So you know, yeah. uh, and then not only that, that kind of negates that unit on the left side. Uh, from doing anything at least immediately but um having said that they are nimble so they can kind of move up and pivot very quickly get back in the action so um, yeah and how, how desperate they are there's the sort of that if we zoom out yeah that's perfect so those that sort of soft center and and i mean that in terms of a defense and nerve uh you know they hit obviously super hard but mark is now committing and that soft center is exposed um, right now it's only exposed really to like scurriers in a tangle that are directly across from it, but very quickly, if any hack paws can kind of fill that, especially with a charge off of, a, um, off of a hill or down a hill, uh, we can start to see some, some dam there. Um, the heights are going to be interesting there, um, because there's that hill in the middle that's sort of hiding a bunch of people's vision, um, from each other between the scurriers, hack paws and the reapers. Um, which kind of makes a weird like safe zone. Yeah, because the reapers are height too, so I don't think they can see that much. Like, yeah, no one, no one can, can see see, that over hill. That, see each other over that hill um, from that sort of central area. Tangles are short as well. Um, mm -hmm. So it's this, it's this fight to control the flanks. Definitely, so that, these two hack points in reserve here in the back. Um, also very interesting move right so he's kind of saying hey wherever you want to charge me i'm going to hit you um and here we go as i say that we got some action here um no surprise to yeah. me um mark took the kind of charge that was was needed of him here to, to get in there yeah. um just you know you really have to kind of do something here you can't sit back we're already seeing these just chip shots just doing serious amounts of damage so 
Um, mm-hmm. Not surprising to try to make something happen here. Um, again, the fiends on the rat fiend is going to be an interesting combat. I don't know if they initially um, will will kill it in one shot necessarily. Um, they definitely can, but um, you know, it, it's right now they're looking at the hack paws coming into their flank. They're going to really want to make sure they kill that to to do something here. But, uh, but again, what's he going to do? What's what's this dread fiend going to do now? Right? I, I don't know how you answer all this stuff here, other than just kind of rely on your nerve and hope to keep keep you know hitting hard so um yeah if he wanted to go into the enforcer he probably should have done that before he moved the fiends because i think now they block its line of sight if he yeah, wanted to go into the enforcer. right so dread fiend here is is can't oh dread fiend can see the mutant rat fiend so if he wants yeah, to can. it's tall as heck right so yeah. exactly so, the guy, so he could get there and lock that guy down he's maybe just saying hey you know what i can just turn around so that only have to deal with your hack boss to just kind of rely on this quick one shot one shot kind of you know mentality which i actually don't disagree with at all when you play an alpha army you kind of have to assume things are going to go correct sometimes in order to kind of keep the momentum going right the whole, the whole point of an alpha strike army is to kind of use momentum of killing things to, to try to kill other things and so you know if you kind of play these weird slowdown games it really hurts you so um you know i think mark was just already committed to this little flank here we kind of knew he had yeah. to go in there yeah, he's using he's using this character that was always there as a bodyguard for the fiends. Another good sort of like general kings of war tactic is when you have a hard hitting unit that needs to get multiple charges off in a game to get its worth, that you give it a little bodyguard or a friend that can yeah. um, protect it from bad situations and also just get in there and seal up uh, a side here. It's sealed off this rat fiend. Um, which will give those fiends a turn. Now, Michael has the same sort of thing for his with the with the small character or the 50 by 50 character there, and he has hack paws coming in. So it's kind of be going to be an interesting about like which side is able to chew through the other faster. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the scarier stats right now because I honestly <laughs> like they're going to come into play here, and I be honest, I've never really looked at them before, so. Um, very very cool unit by the way um duelist um is something that could come to play here if he uses that soul drinker to try to chaff up or block here and next thing you know you're getting these scourges charging and doubling their attacks um not only have they're melee four with vicious so yeah, these guys yeah they're are ninjas not bad yeah they're they're definitely something that you have to respect um usually when you see rat infantry um you kind of laugh and just kind of ignore them but um, I'm, I'm really wondering if these curves are going to either going to somehow get a flank on the fiends where they end up, or hell, even a rear if he kind of angles it differently, or ends up charging the soul drink or something like that. I think that's something that I wouldn't have thought about normally, but now that I'm, I'm kind of seeing the way this side is playing out, I think it's going to be a very relevant factor here. Um, these fiends are going to be, you know, every every point that's on these fiends is going to matter a lot because these fiends basically have to do so much work on this side. Um, you know, they can't they can't really grind out. So if if you know Michael's able to kill them in, in you know a couple turns, or you know that, that's probably a good trade for him right now. The way the game's shaping up. Yeah, the scurriers are like the old uh, GW Skaven. What were they called? The the ninja unit, the tunnel runners, or something like that. Right, the clan rats, yeah. I think, or something. Tunnel runners. Oh, tunnel tunnel runners, runners, yeah. there you go. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I totally understand what you're saying about Warhammer. <laughs> I've I've been trying this Sorry. entire time to not call them their old Skaven names because right, right. I I like the. The, the guy so that got me into this hobby was one of my old college roommates, and he played Skaven. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, like my my first however many games of this sort of game were against that army. So that's just my roots are showing. I apologize. Yeah, I, I've kind of forgotten, and I'm kind of glad I did. I, I just say Clan Rats, of course. Clan Rats like the basic warrior. I know uh, there was like that was the Tunnel Runners, like Gutter Runners, right? Which I don't think. Or gut, yeah, maybe they were Gutter Runners. Gutter Runners are more elite version, right? I don't know. If, I don't think there's only one version in this can So who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah. But okay, so here the Reapers are aggressive. I again, I can't disagree with this at all. These guys need to really push it. Um, there and and you know, in, in all honesty, I think their hesitation to push further in the middle might um, it might be something that he's maybe kicked himself a little bit here. Mark was maybe expecting his chaff pieces to live an extra turn. I think mm-hmm. in the way he deployed it. So um, now that the chaff is gone, um, he, these guys are both out of position and they have no protection. So they're they're either gonna have to expose themselves and kind of push it, which I think they're gonna have to do. Um, or you just kind of like wait and sit back. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's a good option. So um, no, there's not enough. He he needs to move up and get those tokens, right? Um, right. Or at least threaten. There's also interesting, which is if he can get up and sort of take that hill, coming down off that hill, they're doing even more 
<laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's if they need it, right? But yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, I think Mark, looking back at his first turn, should have been a little bit more aggressive. I think he wanted to avoid. He, he was really hoping that Chaff was going to live based on on you know where he position because he didn't want him to get charged. But the way the shooting cleaned him up, um, really think, kind of controls a hole in that. Yep. Do you think giving the army with shooting first turn was the right call still, or do you think he could have? because he would have been out of some of that shooting range in the first turn or not have it do that much. Right. He right. would have been more aggressive in the bottom of his first turn. Yeah. I mean, we, we had the benefit of hindsight, obviously, but um, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I mean, having said that, I, I pretty much always take first turn to be very honest. I, I don't, you know, realistically here, I mean, yeah, positioning matters, but you're playing an army that kind of wants to table your opponent. Right. I mean, I mean, the next time really wants to get in there and just start killing units. So, um, you know, going first is, is a much more important advantage in that scheme of things than any sort of late game play, um, especially with an army like Nice Stalkers, which is, again, you really have to get in there and start killing stuff. So I, I definitely disagree with you that he, he uh, a first turn move here, um, you know, would have would have been right now he would be looking to charge things versus right now he's kind of still waiting to prop up and, and prep himself. So, um, and I think, you know, I think we'll it comes see. down to that thing like right now it feels like Mark is having to react to what michael is doing mm -hmm. like it doesn't feel like he's really dictating a ton at this moment but that's kind of like this objective view where we're not really in there i just i'm and just really like i really worry for three regiments of expensive exposed low defense infantry staring at three regiments of you know yeah. oh, steady yeah. aim 18 inch shot uh vicious shooting like Absolutely. even without the lightning bolts, I know they're stealthy and stuff, but you have a tangle with fireball 10 there. I mean, this, this is, it's going to be, I mean, I'll be pretty honest here. I would expect kind of, um, you know, Mark to lose a unit of those before they even get to combat, which is, is going to be absolutely devastating to his game plan. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's just, it's sort of good play here and a, and a cool army, but it's, it's also exactly what they kind of want to be facing. Right. <laughs> I mean, besides the stealthy, the, right. the having yeah, this, be, yeah. you know, heard would even be better but um just having three exposed they don't have the stuff in front of them anymore facing off against a tangle and three regiments of scurriers who just want to sit there and shoot them yeah and i and think they're sitting on objectives so come get us is is right absolutely and that, i think mike might uh, excuse me or mark might want to look at his list after the game and think maybe like what what would that what was i missing here in the early phase of the game that would have made a big impact i think something like a planar apparition with a little bit of healing i uh, would have made a big deal here because those, those pot shots really added up and so that's something that i know that trubbers list has a little bit of healing at least you know there's just some you need some sustainability there i don't think there's no heal i think all. also oh, though, like, he's, got, okay. he's got the life leech instead of uh, the soul drain okay so not quite. i think it's also yeah, important no, to know, like one of those phantoms no no god speakers no god speakers at all okay well then i was gonna say also one of those phantom units like actually only had two damage it was an 11 roll, nerve roll that took them off the board so a little yeah. bit of ub dice luck i think on that one too like, yeah and i and i don't mean to keep going to the traverage list but it's the thing about that thing is it's it's hard to emulate because it is refined down to the bone absolutely yeah it, it was like Every single thing you look at, there's zero waste. There's mo not even that. I think he has one war drum, like one war drum, six individual characters, and the units, and that's what he brought. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you definitely remembered it better than we did. So I, I know he's yeah, playing like, in the past a lot. So uh, and that's one of the tools you kind of expect to the Orcs, but um, but I think you're right. He uses kind of just a wall of nerve to have just yeah, as a defense, yeah. right? So you, that that's, you don't need again, to heal when you have. Right, seven, which, seven yeah, hammers. Right, and that's something that nice doggers <laughs> right. don't have either. Right, so they don't have the nerve. You don't have any healing. Um, you have no compensation there. Right, so um, you know, I was thinking something here. Maybe if you had a plan of to heal up those random pot shots, you know, that unit would have lived. Right, so yeah, it's hard to say exactly, but you know, your opponent can always roll hot, and, and that's going to happen. Right, so you know, maybe this next turn, uh, Mike's going to roll very poorly, and then the units are going to be fine. Right, that, that you could ex definitely expect something like that to happen, but um. You know, it's, know it's, it's I've, I've, I've played an alpha then. strike list for a long time, and I know that like having your screens dead before your hammers are in range is is it basically throws your whole plan out the window. So you know, Mark's taking a, a very long time in the second turn figuring out what to do because I think he's he, yeah. he's basically having to to refigure out how he wants to play this game. And like it's 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 hard to sort of say like, hey, this uh this army could could use a planar apparition like. Every army basically could use a planar apparition there. 
reasonably cheap, solid healing that makes right. a great like ensnare blocker when when right. you need to throw them up. So like Night Stalkers have a million different really great toys. Oh, um Warlock's dead. There went the Warlock, yeah. Just like that. Just just one wound and a really hot nerve roll. Uh with yeah. dread thrown in from the dread fiend, I guess. Right? They have yeah. dread. It's right there in the name. They better. Yeah, yeah they exactly. Right. So um yeah, I mean it's gonna take little things like that to get back in the game, right? So that's that's you know, a step in the right direction for sure. Sorry, what killed it? Uh Lightning bolt. Uh, lightning bolt. Yeah, lightning bolt. So and, lightning and bolt, that's really he important. Yeah, he, uh, he didn't mean to pay for it, right? So the lightning bolt he accidentally right. has, he used and and able to take out warlock. So there you oh. go, right? I think lightning bolt is always a great thing to have, even if it's only lightning bolt three, because even if it's alive later down the game and there's something that's like, oh, they're super overkilled, and I just have nothing to get there, that lightning bolt can be really helpful just to like be a little clean up at the end. It just needs to do that one wound to force a nerve check. I I always feel like. Lightning Bolt never seems that scary until it's turn six. And and, yeah. you're, right. and like I played Kingdoms of Men and Dwarves pre pre Martyr's Prayer Dwarves, um, where you would have some some units sitting there just beat to hell. But like it's okay, no one's gonna get to it. And then some guy pokes his head out of nowhere and is like, "Unit gone, unit gone." And Absolutely. my thing list always have, you know, three hordes walking around on fifteen damage at the end of the game and. Right, Stupid little lightning bolt mages, just uh, <laughs> yeah. Even then, on that same note, I like to take I take my lightning bolt in my kingdoms of men list. So it's like, oh yeah, I'm yeah, doing for the same it. reason, right? Um, I mean, that's one thing I was gonna talk about. I think it's a very important role in the army. I kind of I call it the janitor role. It's like the role of like the cleanup, right? Who's someone's gonna come in and clean up those units that are just left sitting around? And and you know, a lot of times individual flyers really good. Like Basus is one of the best cleanup units he has. He's gonna pun, come in there, do about five wounds to anything, and just kind of you know take it, pick it up. So you know, um, you just need something to kind of clean stuff up. Now I see Ooh. a lot of dice rolling here. Um, yeah, and that looks like they didn't do any damage down on that little. So bad. Oh no. Oh. Um, where are we? Yeah, so forgive me for talking through this. So it looks like uh, if I follow Over some here. of the uh, the rolls here, if I scroll up, looks like a snake eyes coming out from Mark. I think is is that correct? No. No, see. I think down here on the the dread fiend that attacked there on those hawk paws down in the right uh, left bottom did no damage, so they still have their thunderous. Yeah. I'm um, not sure what happened there in that middle conflict though. Yeah, here you are talking, and yeah, I think absolutely I think that was a snake eyes. I think oh. there was a snake eyes there on. On this guy. I see, I see, uh, throw up the hashtag UB dice again. I think, <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, absolute disastrous result on, on all three fronts here, honestly. Um, well, the, wait, yeah. where was the snake eyes I on this I see, on this unit on this enforcer? He, that was, uh, oh, god, yeah, I didn't even notice that one. I was yeah, yeah. like the fiends and the oh, yeah, so I think. I think he snaked yeah. that one, and I think this dread fiend did no wounds to these hackers. Yeah, that one did no wounds. That dread fiend down on the bottom. Granted, the brute force is a thirteen, so he needed a little bit more than snake eyes to kill him. But um, you know, it absolutely everything that could have gone wrong went wrong there. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, you know, the I think it's just the insult wound. to injury when it's the snake eyes, right? Yeah. All right. Forcer didn't. R.I.P. Then, Mark. Yeah. Now, yeah. now the fiends are just taking it. Um, two sides here on this. It's absolutely a devastating turn. Um, I, you know, I don't you, really mean on the right side in that conflict there with the fiends. I didn't necessarily expect that that would pop. Right away. Yeah, right. Let's, like, let's we knew that was coming. We we did a bad job as commentators because we were so busy uh, talking about other fun stuff, but that's okay. Let's take a moment and like the the fiends charging the mutant rat fiend. What should they have done? Yeah, like, so they have twenty four attacks. If you scroll up, you'll see um, twenty four attacks. He hits on fours with the J boots pops, so he should be getting about twelve hits there. He's got thirteen, so so far he's looking pretty good. Um, and then you see out of those 13 dice, he rolls and he's got crush one, I want to say, right? So he needs fours. Um, and so I see that this 13, you expect to convert to about six wounds. He only got, uh, five looks like out of those, I think. Is that right? Yeah. So, and then uh... Yeah. And then, yeah. um. And then again, it's just not enough. I mean, his nerve is, is, is sky high right now. I mean, especially with the rally thing next to him too. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, so I mean, even need... six, I don't see that changing. And then yeah. he, like, he wasn't going to kill them in Wingo. Right, no, you wouldn't expect that. Yeah, absolutely saying, not. Right? Yeah. Even the Bane Chain, you're looking about nine wounds, still it, not within range of killing it. So. It feels like a bad, like that just feels like a bad situation he put himself in. I know he kind of had to commit and hope, but like that Rat Fiend is going to take care of the, the thing in front of it, the character in front of it. 
Um, he's now got hack paws and a rat fiend and a character if it wants it into his um, fiends, which is not a position like he wants to be in best case scenario. He survives this round and gets one of those other units uh, in the, in the counter. Um, yeah, that, that side just seems sealed up and, and, well, yeah. the and I think on the left side too, now looking at it, he's got those hawk paws that he left kind of down at the bottom yep. and weren't really committed to anything right on the very left. Yeah. They're just going like, to, there's that objective that. there that he could go up close to, and there's really nothing, not much left there to threaten him to go do that and just hold it. Like he can get in range of holding that or even just yeah, stay really. close in that point of getting up there. Yeah, Maybe he, he just doesn't want to commit there. right away. Oh, yeah. He just runs up, pivots, and sits there, and now yeah. has the, the, a no. charge on anything that wants and to And he can forward. basically face the middle and have both his flanks protected and just stare in the middle and be like, now I'm on the objective, you can't do anything about and it. And normally, also, is that a real... Can we get an arc on that fiend? Oh. Uh, or not fiend, the uh, uh, reapers on the furthest of our right? Oh, over here? Yeah, yes, and then the, the other Reaper unit, right? So yeah, the are, yeah, Woo. they're just out of arc, so they just found this little hole to jump into to kind of. Well, I think they. And, and, I think I think they may have charged this Reaper. Oh, they did. Right oh yeah, they're even charging. Even Sorry. better, you get to be out of range and you get the charge. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you, you know, the kill an individual and over back. Right. Yep, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. right. that's again, you got the dual list we talked about. I mean, yeah, exactly. Um. Kind of say, um, really, Michael's playing this very, very well, honestly. Um, you know, well, just, is that is that good player? Is that a bad spot for a blood for a Mark? Whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a combination of both. I think um, definitely, <laughs> it's, it's uh, it, yeah. It sometimes want to pick your position uh, opponent in a position where they kind of have nothing but bad moves, right? So it, it's kind of like you know, which one, which one came first, right? Um, it's hard to say sometimes, but. Did they come um, from Michael dictating that that was the best right. spot for him, or was that a mistake on Mark's part to put it there? Right. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, Mark, Mark really needed to get those individuals though. out there because he'd lost all of his screens in the middle, and really all he's got yeah. is individuals, and he wants to get something in front of his his reapers yeah, yeah. that can go up and smack things. So he's got no choice really. I just and and in all honesty, I wasn't thinking of that charge as he was moving his individuals around. So this is the the commentator after the fact talking shit, which I totally Hindsight. understand. Hindsight um, 2020. But having that in a position where he can move into that gap where he's not seen by them, attack the one one of the things scurriers really want to fight, which is an individual, um, and be in this sort of advanced, tough position to be in, because now with a with a missile weapon, they can just rotate, shoot, charge, do whatever they want for the rest of the game. They're they're close to getting into your backfield. There, um, just doesn't feel like I don't I don't know what he was gaining from getting that that soul drinker within charge range, but in a gap that was going to allow him to to charge him and just sit comfortably. Um, now there could be a, a next level play here that I'm missing, and and Mark right now is like, no, that's the best move I made all game. But um, like I suckered him in. This is exactly what I wanted those scurriers to do. Um, but I'm just could be, could be. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> I think Scurry is honestly really impressed me right now with this game. Um, it's you know maybe Mark made the same mistake I would have made. I think playing this game, which is just not really expecting some of these moves out of Scurry, the damage output, the movement, the the, the position they're doing. Um, you know, they just have so much at their potential. They're really, really good hybrid unit, and and I'm I'm very impressed with them. So honestly, the vicious is so, awesome. You know, they just do so much. Yeah. We have uh, Mr. Steve in the chat here. Is that Hildrew, we think? Uh, I don't know. But uh -huh. anyways, he's he's coming in with the uh, <laughs> dash 18 on the mutant rat fiend. Uh, right. And then he rally. Rally. Dash 19 even. So, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. The, and then the, the very wonderful, that was not a sensible charge. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I do think it was one of a of kind of desperation. Um, he's kind of committed to the plan and, and having to pull the trigger. Um, you know, the hack paws kind of outmaneuvered him, and and you're you're kind of stuck in a position of, of having to push forward. Um, you know, if that goes well, then you're at least able to claw something back in this game here. But um, I, I kind of agree. Expecting them to kill them is was a bit unrealistic. Um, the refing's about the few 
only units in the army that can actually take a charge, right? So, yeah. you know, it's no accident that Michael presented those to, to kind of get hit. Yeah. There. And that, I don't know, when I'm in this situation, you feel bad when you look back. Like maybe you thought you were making the right plays as you went through, but then you look and you're like, okay, my fiends will break anything in his army in one charge except the thing I charged. <laughs> like there's a there's hundred right. millimeters of frontage in his entire army that he can't break with fiends in a charge and he charged half of that. So. Right, and that was the problem with like you know I, I don't know if you didn't look a turn ahead right because when you put the phantoms in front of those fiends you kind of said okay well I'm going to charge your fiend or your mutant rat fiend oh, so there's a lot of fiends going on here uh, yeah. so so when the, uh, when you put the fans in front of the mutant rat fiends you kind of you you've you've drawn out the next turn right we we kind of did the exercise ourselves we said okay well my my fiends are going to be able to charge your rat fiend so um, if you didn't think through that combat enough then maybe that's that's where kind of maybe some of the flaws came from it's and the like, and the hack paw shimmy, or not the the scurry, the no, what are they? They're hack paws, right? Hack paws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the hack paw. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. What's their sharpshooter unit? The uh, claw shots. Claw That's shots? right. The hack yeah. paws. I get confused in my mind with the claw. Shots. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's all a variation of hacking claws and stuff. So yeah, I, I don't blame it. Um, um, but so their yeah, little shimmy, their little yeah, like shift that was out of the way. Heads up play. Yep. Um, that's not something you see out of Calvary, right? You don't expect Calvary to do that. So he thought, maybe he thought his Dreadfiend covered his flank there. His Dreadfiend said, okay, why can't I, maybe he's in, again, he's trying to play a turn ahead. He thought, okay, wherever those hack balls go, my Dreadfiend's going to lock them down. And that way I, I can, you know, I can get <coughs> my Dreadfiend and then I get another go at him. But again, you're missing things like Bane Chant here. You're missing, you know, you're missing the support. I mean, this side was going to need support. Those Reapers are still out of position. They're still, I mean, maybe they can charge something here, but it's, it's, you know, it's just they, they should have been there a turn earlier to kind of really support that. And again, I think coming that comes down to not taking that first turn. Um, so we're at, we're at like Mark's like... turn, right? We, yes. Uh, so the shooting. Uh, no, 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 we're, no, no, we're, no, 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 Michael's, Michael's is, Michael's is going, yeah. Michael's yeah. shooting turn. I feel like I just came back from the bathroom and I'm like, look, the hot pots went where I thought they would. I did they it. Did. Exactly. <laughs> absolutely. And they're an amazing so, spot. I mean, yeah, he's thrown up these scurriers. Um, yeah. He's got them in his face. He's giving them. Uh, he's got both two of, charges. Both on. of them are charged on individuals, so he's getting yeah. killed us twice. Hmm. Okay. So I see Michael actually committing a big chunk of his army right now. Actually, a couple of hack paws coming in here. I'm not sure if I would agree with this move. Uh, the double could those, could those back hack paws see the see these beans are over this hill? Well, Heans are large cavalry, right? So they're hard four. Oh, um, are they four? Oh. Yeah. So that's a. Yeah. A tricky thing they that a few people out is oh, no. oh, yeah, they are. the rule of thumb is everything went up a height except some stuff. So, <laughs> the, one so that the rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah. The one that caught people out a number of times when I played them is that chariots are generally still height three. They are the same height as cavalry. They no longer see over standard size hills. They are no longer the height of large cavalry. Um, so I, I, because I am a giant coward, I was able to hide my, um, orc chariots behind hills multiple times. And that would catch people out m multiple times. Um, but large cavalry is still, you know, generally sees over the hill and can be charged from most anyone. So. Right. And then I'm sure, you know, obviously, um, he wanted to kill that enforcer up front there. He, he didn't want to really expose his flank, right? He wanted to be a front yeah. charge, but, but again, I'm not sure committing two units to that charge is something that Michael needs to do in his position. Um, you know, that, that losing that reserve before, um, you know, Mark's kind of wave gets hit here. I mean, he's, now he's giving Reapers everything in the world. Right. So, um, I, I'm yeah, a little those concerned. Hack are, those hack paws are dead. Right. 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 He threw them both in there. He basically sealed both their fates, which, which is fine to degree, but, um, uh, I mean, yeah. If you know, he left one on the backfield, and then when the, if that first set of half paws died in the first charge, and you still had the second ones to come up and come if he in. pushes the right ones forward and leaves the left ones back or something like that, he can make it so that he can only charge one of them with both the fiends yep. and the reapers, All and right, then he's. Just to make sure more combats here, by the way. So we got yep. some hack paws now hitting into the dread fiend. I see eight hits and converting those into with the vicious looks like eight damage. Okay, it's that's quite damage, a yeah. bit. I know the dread fiends are a pretty strong unit, but I don't think they'll be able to survive that. Um, and as I say that, he rolls a six. The dread fiends are fourteen sixteen. Wavered. So okay, it's still in the way. 
Oh, Stone away. Dread That's going to be pretty big because he really wanted that guy out of the way so that so yep. that these hack paws could, could hit yeah. back against these. these yeah, he should be coming to play with the rest of everyone else. Right. Definitely, and I think actually looking at this, this double hack paw charger. So now that I look at it a little closer, I think. I think maybe maybe actually this is a smart move on Michael in the sense that um, I know Nishida's going to say and I don't agree with with giving your opponent charges, but he might be able to protect that left hack paw unit from oh, yeah. getting the charge. I think so. That's what I think he's doing. Yeah, so if he actually plays this right, this, this, maybe this double hack paw thing is not as bad as, as it looks initially. Where I think that I think the right hand unit pushes forward, the left hand unit stays, and then right when when uh, Mark's offered up charges, he only gets one hack paw unit. So we see he, eleven damage on the. Fiends on the right already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's just a that start. That was from so. the heck balls in the flank. Yeah. Yeah. And then the situation is that Michael, hopefully, I mean, he hoped he would break the the back unit there that he only wavered, but the hope was that he would then have three um, unhindered, clear yeah. charges Correct. from yeah. his half balls right. against two ish units of his opponent, which would would you know yeah, well, him out. it's, it's um, gonna take some tricky maneuvering here and and um we'll see if he can pull it off i think he can but um but again we'll still have to wait and see now those fiends expect to die there um yep. so, only rolled a four from there but that was enough with all the wounds they did exactly so. and, the, and yeah. that rat the mutant rat fiend is not even in that really that hurt either he's got four wounds he's fine he's gonna um get some of that back with that life healing right so um, how fast are the mutant rat fiends speed seven, seven i think so way fast they got time to to come oh, in yeah. and mess up that whole middle area. This is, Absolutely. I mean, it's sort of obvious. I feel bad as a commentator, like rubbing it in. And if uh, Mark's watching this later and going like, "Of course, you idiots!" Um, yeah, it's not. I, looking, this is like this is the part of the game where you're playing and you're like, "Oh, I this is bad." <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, I know um, he's got a little bit of hope here in the center and, and left here. I mean, again, all the Reapers are, are the, the kind of unit we expected to, to do the most work. So, yeah. um, until they die, I think there's a chance that they can kind of do something, right? Uh, their speed yeah. six. Their speed six, right. So, they're going to... They're, they're, now, they're now outsped by oh, everything on that flag. There's the double... There was... Oh, oh that was double ones for uh, whatchamacallit roll, not sure a... Was. Yep. Oh, it was just for uh, it was a red fiend on the other dread fiend. So again, a lot of fiends actually going on here. <laughs> so many. Fiends yeah, but the double Yankee one track. was not for a nerve check. It was a vicious, I think, roll. Oh, you're. I right. got yeah. excited. I know. So yeah. it is seven plus six, thirteen. Is is he still alive? Let's see. Dread fiend is fourteen, sixteen. So it's actually fine. So he he's good either way. He's so okay. um, yeah, dread fiends are a really good unit. Yes, yeah, so dread fiends they have that high nerve and they are able to kind of you know, get in the way. And, and Yeah, and but that, I don't know, that feels like a, if he had taken that up, it would have been... Right. Even it would have just, that would have just been like win more. Like right uh, now, yeah. Yeah. he doesn't need it, for sure. I mean, he has. Um, you, spec, you expect some of these comments to start going Mark's way eventually, right? So we'll have to go away and see. So as I say that, we're rolling over to the so center the here, duelist. the Scourgers with the Duelist. Now, yep. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, can can the, the Ninja Rats take yeah. out the... Uh, so, Coming in hot, nine, nine damage. damage. That's that's amazing. That, honestly, that that shows the power of a duelist and, and so some good rolls there and some quick nerve rolls. And that that soldier is dead. I mean, flat out. I mean, he's gonna right. roll decent forward here. Why the hell not, right? I mean, I think yeah. He only needs a three. Yeah. Oh, he got a two. I think. Oh man. No, I think he's short. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. So two, three, oh, no. maybe a four would have needed, but uh, either three. way, he's short. Probably so, been. right. But he's still, he's still not. Still He's yeah. still hashtag small miracles from Mark Taylor. Right. Mark yeah. realizing that that was, you know, something that one of one of the many things that starts needs to start going his way in order to kind yeah, of that would have been that would have been so horrible if he had like taken yeah, that charge. Hit them as ninja, well, yeah. Ninja them out and then and that, hit them that's point. my problem with the, the, the individuals in that, that role he's trying to put them in, right? So that's why I think I like to just just some classic chaff would have just been better served in his army um, versus the soldier because he this they weren't aggressive enough they weren't upfront enough to kind of be you know they they had the same movement there's no reason he should be letting them charge him you know the, again a lot of these things oh. that you're just wondering and wavered no. the ones in the middle wavered okay yeah. that's that's fine right yeah. so okay so at least at least Mark has some counterplay his turn at least he can he can start picking up some units something that I'm sure he's very eager to do um, like he would have rather obviously he would have rather have killed that unit um. But like they're just sitting there now as a giant blocker to yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Again, I can't be. I'm I'm so impressed with these carriers. They're very very <laughs> cool. 
So here's the double hack paw charge into the flank. Yeah, so why not dice. roll 64 dice at once, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what, 29 uh, hits. My baby hands are so thankful for you be for those kind of rolls. Right, <laughs> right. I'm the one who actually will do try 20, to do it all 20 in one wounds, roll 21 wounds. Oh. Yeah. So, or no, probably 25 because he's add, coming add, off a add hill. Add four more, so 25, yep. God, look at that vicious roll. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, very good. So that's the snakes, yeah. So as expected, they're dead. So again, this all machine... Right. Here so now, let's see if we were right. If he does, right. Right. can does Michael here. protect himself here from a from a double charge? Um, well, I think also that that those one set of fiends can. I mean, uh, hack paws can't really move back very much, right? Like, or move much because yeah, that, they don't. Uh, need to. He's he's counting yeah. on one. He was probably hoping that unit was dead, which is why he did them first. Um, right. Yeah. So that he would have more room to move backwards. The, yeah, he has I mean, a little can, less room to maneuver. Is what it comes might move him sideways. Actually, here I think maybe the hackpaw is going left. Might yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. I, I see that now. Yeah. So that's actually that was that was it's a slick little move here because honestly the, the biggest threat right to them ah, is the fiends. Wait, oh. wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is even spicier. So oh. He moved to the left. Mm -hmm. So they have a flank They're now. Flank, but they can't They're go. Flank, 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 but they, they can't, can't go anywhere. No Where the hackpaws are currently, they can't fit. And of yep. course, you'd be crazy to then move the move balls. Them. Yeah. So, um, so, so well now done. the question is: Can the fiends? Can the fiends get in? Right, and I think I think and the fiends are going to have to fit in between deal. this this terrain. Uh, this individual is still going to be here, but he's not an individual. He's, he's an actual large infantry. He's, model, yeah, so he's, he's not. He's model. not going anywhere. So he's. Well, they haven't done that combat yet. Yeah, so. combat right. isn't done. I right. think he's oh, oh he's right old snake so he's actually fine right so yeah so um yeah I think the key was going to be to me when I looked at it, I eyeballed it again moving left is very smart there because the fiends potentially had some room to kind of go left uh, pivot and go straight and hit the hack balls on the right side of their base but the way he moved them left I think that is completely cut off and and even pivoting here cuts that off as well so again well played by Mike on if he saw that right away kind of assumed that something would happen there he'd probably be fine but um. He definitely, I, it gives a little bit more credit to his double charge there and why it made sense to just overkill the fiends as opposed to kind of <laughs> relying on average dice. Why rely on average dice? We can just, you know, go over the top. And this is what I love. This is what I love about these games and these armies. Um, he gets a chance to run out like a six hack paw, triple, quadruple, whatever, scurrier list um, without, like, for me, spending a year and a half making Skaven cavalry to bring to a tournament like it's yeah you can exactly. run it out you can run it out in a reasonably competitive situation it's you know it's a tournament game it's not just blank bases against a friend um he's playing someone who's going to be playing serious and and really start to run it against the meta and see how it performs um it's something i've talked about sort of with with our group is that we have a very small meta which means i can't reasonably play skew lists because i won't know how they perform against good players across the field i'll i'll know like if i play a skew list i'll know it can be the one army jeremy is playing right now maybe um mm -hmm. but but ub gives you and these call to arms tournaments gives you these great chances to try weird lists in a competitive environment reasonably competitive environment and expand your kings of war playing community um which gives you a chance to try much much more interesting things so. Yeah, yep. I think that's a really good point too, right? So, couldn't agree more. I think we've all learned our lesson in, in like, I, you know, I thought I found this magic army that's like, oh yeah, this army is great. It beats all my friends up, and then I, I took it to a tournament and it, it gets clobbered. Right? I'm like, oh wait, like I missed such an obvious counter to this list, right? And so, um, you know, I think I think being able to, to get the reps in here on UB is, is a yep. huge benefit. And, and I'm like, saying that. Can... We're missing some charges here, so I'm going to catch up yeah. on the game real quick here. Um, Mark's yep. wasting no time. They're going to get some charges in. So, again, he's going to represent the Hackpaws, represent the Scurriers. Um, I imagine the other Reapers will probably charge something as well. Um, don't have, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, they mm -hmm. don't have Reapers. He's got a Brute Enforcer and Rain Root, which is just not exactly going to put him in a good spot. So we'll see what he does there. So the Fiends are going in there as well. Um, the other enforcer, again, yeah. just taking kind of the obvious charges here. I think he wants to pick up units, right? Let's just kill. If he can kill these three units here, it's a, it's a small step towards putting them in the right spot. And honestly, um, it, it's actually not a terrible spot either because uh, the left yeah. side of the field is still pretty safe from the right side, right? That right side is, is more or less dealt with, but, you know, it's going to take him at least another turn to kind of influence yeah. the middle. The um, problem is, though, that everything, like, again, this is that whole... Um, Rat can have an advantage, and this is part of the reason the rat can sort of trash 
lists did better than some of the other trash lists in the last, or not even trash, but just sort of like massive walls of infantry. Mm -hmm. Their base move six, and then everything kind of goes up from that. So, you know, the rat fiends, the hack paws, all that stuff that's sealed off on the right is pretty fast, and it's going to get another charge in in this game. Um, you know, if you were playing against like Kingdoms of Manor or, or you know Salamanders, and you saw you lost that flank, you could just sort of assume they were never going to get back to you. Um, but with Ratkin, they're they're coming. They're fast, and this is only turn three. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, speed is still the most important stat in the game here. I mean, that's the one that kind of dictates what you're going to be able to do. Um, yeah. And, you know, his army. Which here. is why I play Kingdoms of Men and Orcs. Cause... Right. That's yeah, because like right? play it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I mean, we don't play fast armies, I guess. But, uh, I mean, there's ways to counter speed. And unfortunately, um, you know, this, this, uh, this is not for Marky. He's not winning the speed game right now. It's, it's kind of. But I do. Game. I do like his his crisscross charge where the like sometimes it just takes a you, you sort of think that the unit on one side is going to go that direction and you have a much better opportunity to pick something up where he's going to probably kill those hack paws and he's going to kill those scurriers but he's put those fiends in a more dangerous position now um because those those fiends they're gonna they're gonna murder that scurrier unit in the flank, and then they're gonna get that free reform to face whatever dangerous direction they need to do next. Um, so he's he's kind of using them as just like a free reform. <laughs> right, right, exactly, and that's get them in the flank, and then and then point the direction you really wanted to go. Exactly, um, and and you know exactly we're gonna see, you know I think um, the the tuners that doubled up on the enforcer here on the left. Um, he's going to want to see those phantoms, I think, that's still alive. The last unit of phantoms still alive. Um, want mm -hmm. to run for a D6 and start, try to block. You know, if, if he rolls high enough, he can block two units of hack paws. And that would be a huge play for him to kind of get back in the game here. Um, you know, yeah. if he can prevent them from, from doing much, which, again, going to be hard to do because uh, depending on some angles here on the right, um, hack paws <laughs> might just be able to charge anyways. But, you know, if he can get, he can prevent those hack paws from charging, then he can kind of really get a couple charges on himself and really kind of deal with them. So I think that's what he'll be looking yeah. to do here if I was if that, I was at least Mike or excuse me if I was Mark. That waiver, um that waiver in the bottom left is gonna help because and this isn't going too far into it, but it what I kind of try and do is you look at like okay when when everything kills what it's supposed to kill this round, what's left sort of facing off over the future rounds. And what what's sort of left is uh, three regiments of hack paws against fiends, reapers, and phantoms. And whoever gets that first go is going to swing that combat because they're going to remove, if the fiends and the reapers get to go, they're going to remove one to two more units of hack paws and then that flank is lost. If the hack paws get to go, they're going to kill one of those two hammers and probably win out the attrition. Um, so right now I think Mark is in an okay spot on that side because of that waiver. He seals off that back unit and, and gets a chance to do some stuff here. Uh, I just think that right flank coming coming over is gonna is gonna swing it back the other direction. It's just how fast they can do it. I do what love turn that. Are we on? What's that? What turn are we on? Three? Bottom of three here, yeah. Still half wow, a game yeah. left at the very least. Um I mean that right yeah. flank, uh, you know, it is it's I know we kind of beaten the dead horse now, but it, it's total disaster on, on Mark's part as far as the result income and, um, uh, you know, just collapsed and collapsed very quickly. So, you know, it's, it's the, you know, it's kind of living and dying by the sword. Sometimes when you play an alpha strike list, you know, if things don't go well, they, they, they go do, very poorly. So I do um, really love, I love this, that Reaper charge into the flank of those scurriers. Yeah. Because it gives that Reaper unit a chance to turn and deal with, this scurrier unit that would have been just horrible. Like they were, they were going to be in the backfield. They're yeah. going to be able to avoid the Reaper unit that was in front of them's charge arc. I mean, they could have like turned left and headed over and like gotten behind the fiends or taken that object. Like there was so much that scurrier unit, I feel like was going to be able to potentially accomplish that is now those Reapers, depending on how everything works out, he at least has something that can turn and deal with them immediately. So yeah, I mean, it's like you gotta the scurry. He, he finally he respects the scurries now, right? <laughs> He's saying, "All right, I gotta deal with it." Like, you know, Michael's forced them to at least, you know, to, to acknowledge that they're in the game and they have to be dealt with. So I, I, well, this I is a 
from Michael, yeah. this is a disrespect list, right? This is, sure, this is yeah. units I don't think I ever saw in a physical, like, game right. of, of war with my own eyes. I know they existed at tournaments I was in, like the Scurriers. They, they existed somewhere, but those two units were not something I think I ever physically saw on the table in a, in a second edition. Right. Absolutely. You know, we, we don't have a Reckon arm review yet, but if there was a tier list, right? I mean, how, how do, do Hackpaws get very high on that list? I mean, just theoretically, I, I don't think they I do think, normally. I think um, your maybe, tier list just changed. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think <laughs> this you know, whole thing yeah, I'm changed. I'm glad we everything. didn't do that one yet. Exactly. Clearly, so clearly we should ask Michael to write it. Exactly, Jake, if you're listening, exactly. drop him a line. For sure, because I mean, it, it, and that's the cool thing I love about you know these kind of armies that can, can try to take advantage of it, right? He's, he's, he's he challenges his opponent, saying, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, be embarrassed. How embarrassing would it be if you lost a you know an army of all hack paws, right? But you know, it's like, but when you use them this well, it, it's you know, it, it's there's, there's right. a lot of advantages they have, right? So you know, but I, that's I, I the, love the way it's been built. That's sort of the tricky. Like, I know, I know, I think it was at Living Legends that um pat and michael piercy were playing on the same team and they would like point at a spot and like roll dice to see what unit would get placed there during their deployment or they would like randomize who was controlling which units each turn and all of this and it's that kind of stuff is really funny and like i'm going to take this crazy army of all but like he knows what he's doing here his crazy army of a bunch of hack paws and scurriers works really well together uh <laughs> It's like, definitely not the first time it's hit the tabletop. I, I can guarantee that. Um, you know, it's it's that whole sort of like, oh, they're just hack pawns. Who oh, who knows? And then it's right. like, no, they're actually really efficient for their points and synergize yeah. well with the rest of the stuff in the army and have all the right pieces. And so, you know, right, we're moving yeah, on the combats do. here. They, yep, here we go. Um, so the reason the Reapers were bane chanted going into yeah. that combat, not that they necessarily need it, but. Oh, wait, if you got it. Off and doing uh, doing the fiends. Oh, sorry, the up, sorry, yeah, going on to that poor enforcer who's <laughs> trying to try <laughs> really over the really entire time. First. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Double one, please. Double one. Nope. And no, gone. no. Okay, so all right, so finally killed them. They're gone. All right, so now he's going to breathe a little bit here. Let's see if he kind of um, tries to do something like we said, where he, he um, has a lockdown the zeros on the left. Yep. I would guess. I would guess phantoms forward and fiends backwards. Yeah. Guess. Uh, rolls. I don't know which one that was for. Um, we're gonna see in a oh. phantoms, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> sure, yeah. it might be enough. It might it, be enough. It might be well, it depends whether it rolls three inches on the phantoms, or excuse me, on the fiends. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like the key is, is the, the, that unit of hack is just the left of the reapers with the reaper charge. That's the one you really ought to worry about. Um, you know, those are the ones that they could potentially use some corkscrew charges and things like that. Um, Wants to move back then, go pivot. I'm not sure how that works. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. Are they nimble? At this yeah. point, just cheat. Mark. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. it's fine. You're not being streamed. It's fine. Yeah, no one's going to go back and leave a comment on the on the thing after the fact, asking if that was a legal right. move or not. That's never happened. I, I so that would never happen. No one would ever like want to discuss any of this. I, for a very brief moment, was hoping it it doesn't work out, but I uh, the um, the hack paw unit on the far left would have to be a little further back. Um, but I was like desperately hoping there was some kind of crazy nimble charge around the top of the building that they would be able to pull off, where like right, they could hilarious. see their flank and in two pivots they could like go up and then pivot back and come around. But exactly. it, it wasn't quite going to work. But I. I know some people hate those, but I love when someone's able to pull off just this crazy, you know, go all the way around the army's battle line and hit a hit an exposed flank. Um, However, no it's always funner to watch when it's not happening to you. Yeah, yeah, so in about yeah. half a second there, the uh, those hack paws absolutely disappeared. So yeah. you know, reapers yeah, did Bane, exactly what we expected. They enchanted reapers on a yeah, on a and that's, unit. that's the fastest yeah. run I've seen. That, that's the definite speed run right there. I mean, that unit was dead in. in so wait a minute. What is, what is, 17 wounds, I think. 17 wounds. Just pick them up, yeah. right? Yeah. You tell your opponent, I'm tired of this shit. So, you right. know. So he was trying to spin. He was trying to spin them to get out of the hack pause arc. Right. And I don't think that's worked. possible, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the problem right now. See, so that arc is coming there. And those hack paws, you're going to have to deal with them. They're a huge problem the way we kind of expected them to be. So, um, 
That's that's exactly it. Um, some interesting comments, by the way, on here. Uh, also yeah. talking about hack paws and and you know how they they they're decreasing shooting and also their increase in defense has both made huge factors in their viability, which makes total that's, sense to me. That's what I, I said. At I the like, uh, of, that's exactly what I said at the beginning of the cast, bros. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, got... totally. Um, no, it's, I really it's like this right. comment yeah. from Tom Anistel. It's like the most difficult part of playing the game against Michael is figuring out what his uh, units do that no one else actually plays. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially if your opponent's like good with them. I mean, yeah, we've already seen these hackballs do many things that you would never expect the regiment cavalry to do with these exactly. movements, these, you know, kind of out of the way charges, um, you know, their speed and everything like that. They're, yeah. they're just very I unique. Do... Uh, I, I will say that like definitely Ray uh, Ray Shields has a point, which is is sort of what we talked about earlier, but bears repeating as much as possible that you can't ignore the decrease in uh, sort of light shooting that has unlocked all of these lower defense units and builds onto the meta to do terrible things to people. Um, and then it I feel like I don't know what it is, but I feel like half the rap players in America or in, in the world right now are coming onto the stream to, to help Michael. Yeah. Pierce with moral support. We, we Absolutely, dude. He's being carried on shoulders. You know, if there's a parade after this, he's getting hefted on many, many shoulders. To the, he's getting, know, he's getting him. rallying from all exactly, of this. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and I, and I agree with that too. I mean, I think you think back to your traditional elf list, right? That, that you was such a terror back in second edition. I mean, that army would have a field day with these hack paws, right? I mean, it, it would be picking up unit after unit, but with that elf army not really in existence anymore, um, you know, you don't have to worry about that, that sort of devastating range for, shooting that is kind of tore up the midfield so um you know you can make a core army out of a defense for fragile unit and, and it kind of works now right i mean as long as, as long as you're trading properly and, and kind of setting it up i think absolutely it's a different kind of you know tier archetype of, of army here that you see michael obviously take advantage of and, and obviously playing very very well with you know he definitely understands uh when to push when to you know back up what what to what charges to give his opponent what when to kind of go around them um you know, I love it. I actually love this style of play here. I think it's a really good, valuable learning game. New players or veterans oh. alike. So he blew up. Uh, he blew up the scurriers. Yes, as expected. Uh, yeah, as expected, as expected yeah. 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 It was kind of a shock. So he he left them in a position where the other scurriers can get away, right? So a couple of things there, right? So the one unit, the unit with the wound on them too, they didn't even move at all, I think, as far as I can tell. Um, no, they didn't really turn. I thought they were maybe have at least turned a bit to get yeah. a little bit more of a view of the field, but decided against them. Could have them, packed I up. could have done. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, very curious to give these charges to the scariest again. That they're no jokes, right? I mean, giving them a flank yeah, I think for he, free. I think he weighed that scary. against like all of the charges from things over here that if he turned to put yeah. the scurriers in the front, then he was going to get flanked by these things probably. They just yeah. decided to leave it. Right. And I think, yeah, on the but right I think side... now how the angle works, if those scurriers take that flank, the other reapers, when like nothing can really see them as much either, they're going to be completely on the other side of the hill. So uh, the reapers on the hill will be able to see them. Yeah, bottom them. bottom left. Um, I have a question. I don't know if they will. I have a question yeah. on bottom left here. Uh, oh yeah, they will. Can the hack paws? Oh, they can't see them. Okay, I was looking at the bottom left hack paws, shifting like backing up there one inch, and then taking a nimble charge at someone to the left. Um, but it doesn't. I don't think they can see them because of that hill, which is too bad because that would have been funny. Um, yeah, some cool nimble shenanigans, right? Yeah. Um, right, they're, they're definitely leader points behind the hill, so they can't see over it. Um, so that's uh, and, then, and also, you know, left the hack paws don't have a charge anymore now that I look at you know, given that the fan the phantoms moved up, they actually would have presented themselves a charge. So, actually, I give Mark a lot of credit there for actually minimizing the impact his opponent can give him by, by rolling one, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Just, just happened to roll one, yeah. yeah um, clutch right. strategic roll of one inch actually helped him out. Yeah. Right, right. So, so you know, things aren't looking so bad here on the left. Again, there's going to be, you know, expect the Reapers and, and whatnot to do. Yeah, a lot they of still damage. have, they still have a charge. I think right, totally. Right yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think like this is one of those games where, like, two. It's like the the way the tokens are placed. It's kind of like three on one side and three on the other. Um, where it could maybe it could end up in a tie. Who knows? Right, I actually agree with you. Yeah, you look at the token placements, and this is actually you know. 
there's there's although his army is you know he, he's running out of units i'll give him that but you know he's got oh boy Oof. oh Ooh, wow nasty. Okay. with the quick actions at the end there looks like uh mark okay, might have missed back. a charge there yeah mm -hmm. hack pause is doing a, a sleek nimble charge there um they're being and, uh -oh. dirty yeah, i'm gonna see charge. if he's over here we're gonna see if uh, on just the left as i said there. those units are not in uh <laughs> effectively being able to charge the thing looks like i was wrong so uh yeah i think i believe so they can definitely clear if they get to there they're good the question is can they, they can, get to that they point between the red and they can see them the yeah they can see them ride through the gap in the hill there yep right oh yeah so I see an oh yeah that's right. here oh, okay yeah it looks like, like you can fit it yeah absolutely yeah. so so um, they did skip a, a action there, but the way it would work is if anyone is newer, um, the first thing that those units would do is pivot once to um, get to sort of the position where they're kind of parallel or going straight okay. onto the, the side that hey, you did the final movement, and they do second pivot to get into that, that straight position and move forward. So um, they were just kind of making sure that he fits between the two units and that he fits in the final position, which he does. So they clearly have a double charge there on the Reapers. That's pretty much a, you expect the Reapers to kind of you know, not really be able to take that charge very well. And there's um, a tangle there to bane chant the flank unit if you yeah, want. Absolutely, yeah, exactly. you got a bane chant there, and then the reapers are also they're also went past the reapers, so they can't even get counter charge. Yep. Um, right, counter charge. So, so now these th these fiends are basically going to be looking at three hackpaw units right in front of it next turn. Right. Yeah. So or, you know, and then a fourth in the backup because he should kill that unit in front with the counter charge. The yeah. dread fiend, yeah. 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 So in the because value, he has, yeah. he has this and which goes. Back. The middle unit of Reapers, which way are they facing? They're facing that way, right? Like towards the right? Towards our, the that's tangle. exactly right. I'm I mean, so yeah, they're facing right, the tangle. Yeah. So it's going to be, so they can't even see anything going on behind them. No, so they they're, can't see, right? They're oblivious so. to the slaughter that's going to go on behind them. So, right now, so you know. Like, did you hear something back there? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, too, too little, too late. And <laughs> they're, they're yeah. struggling for it. Yeah, as I said, mm -hmm. there's potential here to pick up some of these pillage tokens here. Um, Michael showing no mercy, just going straight for the throat here with these these nimble charges. You know, doing two of them in one charge. You know, one one charge like that is, I, mean, I don't I don't think Mark saw either of them. Um, you know, so that's that just shows the power of these these nimble cavalry. Such a such a weird unique yeah. unit to see this much nimble cavalry on the field. Um, and we and again, yeah, Michael's putting on a clinic and how to use them. Now. Jeez. We Absolutely. talked about it last time with sort of multiple flyers that the. And this is true for surge units, flying units, uh, nimble cavalry. Like one is okay, two you can kind of cover. When the the order of magnitude keeps going up, and you're like, okay, I have six potential nimble 18 inch charges coming, you you start to lose track of just that one, and that one comes out of nowhere and catches you. So it feels um, a little bit about like how Mongols worked uh, last edition, where like all of them were individuals. You had all of these like uber nimble cavalry units. Like playing against a list like that was super hard. Yeah, I just, I just don't let historicals play. So you know. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like I always bring something in my list because I don't really run flyers, and you're like, okay, this is gonna like work, and this is gonna be something to tell it to sit down, and and then you're like, oh, cool, there's all of them. I can't tell anything to set down anymore. Like. Yeah. And then we have uh, we have Ray Shields just doubling down, saying a traditional elf list would have shooting and speed on the Hackpaw list in version two. Um, yeah, can't disagree with him there. I mean, I know Ray's coming mm -hmm. from uh, from the point of view of a, of a Rackin player in the Mid Atlantic that has I, a lot of elf players. I mean, we had. I feel know, like I feel like that statement has some hidden venom in it, like some who who <laughs> hurt you, Ray. <laughs> right. Oh, it, the list is long. It, it, trust me. In the, in the Mid Atlantic, you, you expect to see two to George. three, if not four, elf lists at the top tables at any given time. So, you know, yeah. it's one of those things that it, 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 it's a meta call, right? You know, in our meta, if you can't beat that list, then there's no point even put on the table, right? So, you know, I, I see kind of, you know, Ray, Ray's making kind of a point like in his head, he wouldn't even consider a list like this in, in that meta, but that meta's gone. That meta's changed. Yeah. And, you know, here we are in third edition um, that elf list doesn't really work the way it used to, at least. So, um, you know, I haven't really seen what a newer version of the Elf looks like yet. Uh, that at least that that's been close to as effective. But that you know. actually, I'm actually really interested in that from a larger like. I need to look through the first two rounds of these UB at at the Elf list and see like what what is the new Elf list because we all sort of joke. It's like, well, it's Palace Guard. Deal with it. Um, right. But, right. Like I want to see someone's actually working version of the new Elf list. 
Yeah, I really exactly. liked it. Like I tried it at one tournament, like, and I'm not an elf player, but it was just because I couldn't play Kingdoms of Men because the book wasn't out. But I really love the Stormwind Cav too, right? Like that speed nine cavalry is really nice. Mm-hmm. I find like because I play a lot of the Kingdoms of Men and having knights that are speed eight compared to the Stormwind being nine, that one inch difference is really really felt. Yeah, it's so a center of palace right? guard with some like really fast flanks. I don't know. And yeah, I check out check out Adam Ballard's list from Masters. He was playing elves, uh, mm, and, and I yeah, played against him. And he had some of again. those, some of the fast cav. He still had like a dragon. He still had uh, the horde mm-hmm. of palace guard and some other yeah, super I, elements. I sort of view that one as like Adam Ballard has been playing a weird silver breeze, e shooty elf list um, for enough years that I now think of it just as the Adam Ballard list. Yeah, um, you're giving me PTSD. I lost really hard to that list. Okay, so. <laughs> Yeah. So it. he, him, him bringing like mixed, mixed arms, slightly shooty mounted elves to masters is to me isn't like that's the new list of the meta. It's the Adam Ballard is still playing his list. <laughs> so nice there. And, I mean, and, it's, and it still works. Absolutely. I mean, I think there's there's plenty of ways to to take into the elf list now. Um, I don't know who's quite quote unquote figured it out yet, but um, we'll kind of have to wait and see. So Garrett, Garrett, who's another great like random list builder has come on and let us know the German elf player is playing all cav. So <laughs> hopefully there's only one German elf player in the world, or he means the, the UB tournament, but I just like that there's someone out there we can call the, the German elf player. The German elf. All right. I'm ready for this German elf army. Yeah. yeah we're German seeing, elf. seeing, seeing, seeing me some up with shooting the list. on the central unit of uh, reapers here from uh, scurriers Ooh. and the tangle. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, why not, right? Yeah, but five moons on him so far. It looks like um, that looks like it though, right? Maybe a lightning bolt or something. No, warbow. Oh, the warbow. Warbo to see if he can pause. It Remember to use it twice in one game. That that's. I'm really... so proud of him. Exactly. <laughs> it misses, of course, but you know that's that's. What you but expect. he used it. Quick shout Maybe. out, Bart Kohler, in chat there. Thanks. Um, was talking about you. It's one of the terror of this beach elves. You haven't seen them. They're a fantastic looking army, and they've done tons of damage. So. So that was a snake eyes on the central reapers, so they're not going to get picked up. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, if that's oh, the place okay, to use okay. it, yeah. roll Shooting. your double ones yeah, there. Yeah, that's that's yes. if, if I'm picking one combat this turn to put a snake eyes on, that's that's definitely the one that. Yeah, you know, if you're I'm like, Michael, so. when you're at a blackjack table and and it's going around and you see like the combo come out just before it gets to the dealer, you're like, okay, good. Where <laughs> were <laughs> exactly right? Exactly. Like, someone um, someone drew that out ahead. Mm-hmm. That should definitely take out that dread fiend. Uh, now we'll see what he does with these pack paws still in the backfield yeah. behind. When the you hill. said when you said double one on fiends, my immediate oh, reaction was yeah. the ones that had been double. Oh, charged. I'm sorry. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. I, no, I, no, no, I, no, I, I just stopped saying fiends in general to try to be more specific here. Okay. Um, yeah, I was actually on phantoms, right? Is that uh, where does that guy happen? Actually, oh, sorry. On um, on these reapers, on shootings. Right. So he okay. shot with the tangle and the scurriers. I see. I see. At those reapers, and then okay. Stuck. My mistake. My mistake. I think I misinterpreted that completely. So okay, <laughs> let's let's move along here. All right, um, pack paws beating up on these phantoms that already have three wounds on them should should be able to take them out. Drum roll. Uh-huh. Right. Should be what seven wounds? Plus a ten. I just yeah, make it. <clears throat> I like Garrett Hard to know. I no longer care about his actual name because he is now just the German elf to me. <laughs> Yeah, please have a him German change his elf. name on Facebook to that as well, please. The German elf plan. We're going to need him to legally change his name to the German elf. Yeah, no, I, I, that'd be fantastic. See, I, I would love to see, like, I love seeing this like this, and that, that's what I love about UB. I, I, you know, hopefully I'll get to, to cast him maybe in a future game or something like that. would be fantastic. So, um, I pause, roll all at once. Dude, I like I like because this tournament is stretched out. Suddenly, everyone's caring about like round two. Like he's in right. fifth place in round two. It's like <laughs> right, right. We had a in a day tournament. You're like you barely missed that like in your lunch break, right? And it's like yeah. otherwise, it's like you know you just move on to the next game, right? So yeah, totally mm-hmm. not. But it's cool though because you get to do that deeper analysis into you know. It gives us, it gives us well, a lot more also... time to obsess over results and like right, you know, exactly. it, it could be a flash in the pan but we'll we'll see it's cool yeah i think I'll it's also know. interesting too with the ub because there's no time limit right so you can take your time a little more and things like that happen as well um mm-hmm. and i think that's like it's kind of un- you can't really implement a time um counter on these because if like just dealing with the interface can be an issue right so 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, but I, I, it's kind of a cool thing that we have this longer time as well. But I will say, thank God for quick players. I mean, we're... Yeah, we've been doing pretty good. <sighs> Absolutely. So as we say that, another Union Reaper is just bites the dust here. Yeah. The first Union Reaper bites the dust, I say. Um, the second one's in big trouble. The second one so is now, in like, some pain. When, we, when I originally theoried out this idea that like Reapers are going to kill their target, the hack paws are only going to be able to recharge one thing, his his tricky nimbles changed that, and now what you have is a unit of fiends staring down basically four units of three and then one in support units of hack paws. And then you have um, a unit of reapers that are staring off into kind of space. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the reapers, you know, and let's kind of wait and see what happens in this combat before we get too far. Because I think it's fine. Let's, let's see here. They you only got a three for nerd damage. Yeah, they they're, rolled they're three, fine. so okay, yeah. So this is a big deal here. So they they yeah. held, I believe, right? I think. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. I think it helps, but like, it's oh, still bad. Thirty dice. I think he's just rolling oh, both we're of going you. Next combat. So, okay. so yeah, so yeah. we got to, um, so I mean, yeah, it helps again. They're not going to win the game for him necessarily single-handedly, yep. but it's just, um, there's, there's this little half circle of three tokens in the bottom, right? Yep. And he has two mutant rat fiends ready to yep. just come out and, and hold tokens, kill like the tangle yep. can hold the central one, right? The brood enforcer oh. can hold one because it's not an individual. Yeah, the brute enforcer can go back, and then he just has these two rat fiends to just bomb into the middle and and do whatever they want. Um, yeah. So right now he's 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 hiding the uh, rat fiends from these reapers behind the scurriers. Looks like. Yeah, might as well. Um, yep. Scurriers. But uh, they, they don't even have range. It doesn't really. Yeah. They only like speed twelve. It's just a. Yeah, it's a bad spot. Like, there's a couple yep. bright things. The other thing I want to say. I mean, this is probably going to change in a moment with those. Counter charges, but he he has five of the six hack paw <laughs> regiments left. Right. Definitely expect that to change. Um, like I think yeah. right now those individuals really need to do some some you know insane work right now. So um, I don't know if you can click on that one soul drink in the middle, see if they have charges to anything. Um, okay, so I see them. I assume going to the flank of the hack paws or the rear of the scourgers. I okay. I probably would have picked the rear of the scourgers myself just to get away from those fiends, those you know, mutant rat fiends, but. Um, you know, I think he just sees a flank, he wants them dead. Um, I take chances, right? Just make sure they die. Um, yeah, and and these 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 reapers into the front of the scurriers ought to do the job on their own. Yep. Um, definitely, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's really for the unit. So if you're gonna, you know, if you're at the frontal yeah. one, um, I yeah, guess if, you, one if he rears the scurriers, that's like what with the front charge and that's the 75 rear. attacks. No, because if there's the rear and the front charge, it's like a hundred attacks. It's a hundred. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 definitely probably hit the front yeah. of the hackballs. But even seventy-five attacks, I'm like. Yeah, so I mean. Maybe so, put the fifty in the hawk paws and just. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, you expect both of units to kind of die now. In response, but again, what you know, is there any way to prevent both of your units getting charged after that? And I don't know the answer to that. We're going to have to see if this individual is anything. I did click the individual there. I see that twelve-inch ring. Um, you know, I think it's just shy of the scurriers if I read that correctly there. Um, yep. So, yeah. um, again, that's something yeah. that you really wanted him to do, right? Get in there, lock him down, right? Maybe he could have even prevented the, the rat fiend, the mutant rat fiend from getting around to, you know. But, yeah. again, you get in front of these six on an individual is not enough, in my opinion. It's just not enough to get to where they need to be. And, and here's a case in point where they're just not where they need to be. Um Oof. That, no. That's interesting. Yeah, I, think, but... I think I would have sent these fiends over into like these hack paws and tried to throw the reaper into the unit of hack paws he just charged. Steal them mm. off. Yeah. Steal them off. Well, yeah. the reapers were out of arc for that unit, right? So they couldn't hit them. I think. Reapers but... were, but not the the reaper. Oh, sorry, the, the soul drinker. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The soul drinker needs to do something, right? There's no question about he's it. He's coming yeah. in, and he's yeah, coming he... in to to block okay. off this one from the flank. So he's going to block them off and and. But again, I don't know. How's it not not be looking good though, right? Because you have to deal with yeah. these two nimble hack paws facing you, right? What are you gonna do after that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, no, I do agree that I would have gone left there as well, though. I, I think playing around, um, playing playing there. I think you're just less likely to get double charged. I think just based on the terrain yeah. and the individuals and stuff. I don't know the way. I don't see him getting out of a double charge. The way he he charges the middle there. Um, maybe he has some kind of master plan here uh, that we don't see. No. They're large cavalry, so in his current position, he's also potentially opening himself up to a charge from that back unit. Back. Right, and that's what I mean when they say double charge. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's three units here that are going to get somewhere there, and and you know, 
I see a thumbs up approval there from um, <laughs> Ashley's side. So looks like- Yeah, sorry, that was friendly. He right delivered my water. Oh, we wow. have an interesting question. Uh, Bart Kohler is asking, how did five tokens end up on one side of the board? Yeah. Um, and I assume he means like table side of the board. And it's just like, there's no rule in this that they have to, they have to go right opposite so, side. someone someone stacked yeah. one side a little so, more for train yeah. Yeah. obviously, yeah. obviously yeah. one player thought it was in his advantage uh, to do that um i we just don't have unless unless mike atkins knows i don't we don't know who picked i wasn't paying attention yeah so uh, it's like deployment table side before we get into the game so um, i believe i believe uh mark won table side choice and chose his side right yeah okay. i think so i think you might be right um so this is an interesting situation where it's possible that they were, someone was setting up the tokens in a way to say, I obviously think this table side is better. If I stack tokens also on that side and I lose the turn roll, I might just lose the game. So I'm gonna put more tokens on the bad side in their opinion and the good side to uh, sort of like balance it out, right? Like, right, and I honestly, I think the way it worked out, she kind of misfired a little bit because I think I think the bomb is actually the better side because it has the wider flank with the Sphinx there, and that, that actually came into play with the 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 nimble unit trying to get in there. So because we had to come out, right? Right, like, exactly. When you when it, you're I, you know if you see that Sphinx there, you don't want to deploy on that side of the table because you just automatically um, kind of you have less to play with, right? You have less room to play with. If, if yeah, I, but if I'm if I'm running a if I'm running my orc army or you're running your dwarf army mm -hmm. and, the, and the game is dominate or something. Sure. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm loving right. that. I'm loving yeah. that closed off side where I can, yeah. I can move a, my, my battle line will stretch from pyramid to Sphinx double stacked. <laughs> right. Right. And I think if, if the, if the pillage tokens were, were to play a little differently, I think that's totally the game Mark could have played. I think Mark could have put not, his cavalry in that, in that, you know, sort of up against that Sphinx, use them to pick the flank and say, Hey, I'm not going to move from here. So the ball's in your court to push up. And so my, my only guess is, is that the players realizing the same thing, stacked them more towards that open area to prevent the person who wins the table side with Sphinx and other from kind of auto auto getting half the tokens. Right. Which, which it would be odd to me if Mark won the table side and then picked that other side. Yeah. That would, it, that would be odd to me if, if that's what happened. Cause I think. Cause my, I'm looking at my initial impression is I look at this token placement and I think bottom of the board where uh, Michael is, is great. Cause he just moves yeah. up a little and he's in he has half the tokens and he's striking distance of the other half. Um, yeah. And I think maybe, maybe Mark was letting the shooting get to his head thinking, okay, I can't, you know, I can't say if I take the bottom side, I can't sit back long enough. So I'll just get shot to pieces. And and you know, if he thought that, then that's that's probably accurate because of the way he's in the carriers too damaged. His, his his army would not have lasted that that long. So, uh, you know, we'll have to kind of ask him. I mean, definitely a question thing in the post game analysis to see if he picked table side, what he you know why he thought he was at advantage in that time. Yeah, I mean, Bart Bart raises an interesting sort of point in doing our job for us, which is um, that's something to say for the post-game analysis, which is like, please talk to us about token placement and how that influenced board, board side choice. Right. So, so far, Mark in three combats has picked up three units. Yep, uh, absolutely. So, so as expected there, finally get the kill three. Yeah. It's a little satisfying, you know, to finally kill yep. three units in one turn, but... That's um, going to hammer. Exactly. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, that's yeah, I mean that's what the army was meant to be doing all game. Yeah, was, exactly. We just waited hard. to turn four till it happened. Yeah. Exactly. Charge up a unit, and that like it's okay to wait till turn four as a, a alpha strike list. Like alpha strike doesn't mean hit turn one, turn two all the time, but yeah. you have to be in an increasingly advantageous position until you strike. Right, like you and and he was forced to go in on some bad stuff. Um, the yeah. shooting was taking its toll. Some positioning was out of place, and you know, there's that horrible feeling when you get charged by Alpha Strike sometimes on turn four or turn five, and they just pick up your entire army because they've you know octopused around you and are now you're in the worst possible position before they stick the dagger in. This does oh, not yeah. feel like it. This feels hack like desperate charges. Absolutely, but hack paws are not done doing nimble charges. Nope. Um, there all day. A, the unit of the fiends looked like they were safe. They they said, hey, we're gonna we're in a position so that like. I, you know, my, my flank is covered and you can't really get there, but, <laughs> I you know, they don't really care. So they're, they're going around, they're getting, and then he has nine wounds on him. So they're very close to the brink of death there. So they're, you yeah, know, I'm probably cool. in a lot of trouble. And then that's, you know, yeah, of are course like is going to get piled on, you know, bring in the whole kitchen sink here, right? This is, this is, you know, the triple charge, you know, 
I yeah, I don't even know if he was hindered or not. I mean, probably not. So it's just, it's just bad news here all over. I think yeah. It Those feels Reapers like being at nine, they're already only 14, 16. So it's like, a you know, they don't need much to just fall to pieces. So he's sending the Rat Fiend over to be a token standee. Mm-hmm. And he's sending the the sort of utility character in into the fighting. Um, yep. Well, he can, because then the utility character here can just stand on this one. And the Rat Fiend and the Scurriers can keep heading further left at whatever's left. So, yeah, I just... My right, initial totally. impression was send both rat fiends and send the utility character over to, to be a token guardian. But I mean, I guess part of this is he can, He's the utility fine. character has utility and yeah, it's, can kind exactly. of get in there and do trickier stuff. So he's, he's replacing raw power with a little utility, which is just an interesting choice right now. De- definitely yeah. interesting. I mean, the rally inspiring is, is hard to say, like, you don't want that around your army, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, let's say he, maybe he's playing on the snake eyes, right? What if I do snake this unit, right? Is that rally inspiring going to maybe save me a rat fiend, right? You know, maybe, maybe it will, right? So um, if he's playing like that, then, then hats off to him. For, for, he's given know. them, he's given them inspiring. Uh, right. That, that's a fair point. Sure. That's a fair point. Um, but sometimes, I just, and part know, of me just loved the idea of him turning two rat fiends towards the center and bombing them. <laughs> going to town, right? Yeah. Just, I mean, I, yeah. I, I totally get the, the giving them inspiring part. That is something that is, is um, you know, like, do you really want to do that? But again, he's kind of expecting to be on snakes and, and maybe he's saying, you know, yeah. inspiring on yeah. snakes is, is, is not a huge deal compared to if I do roll yeah. snakes, I'd rather have my defenses set up. Again, and that's a, that's a really important sort of percentages conversation, which is inspiring is insurance and like getting inspiring on snakes is really not improving your odds that much. It's like <laughs> buying house insurance after the fire has already started in your house. Um, yeah. But getting inspiring on someone just trying to get a lucky route or a lucky waiver, like that one lucky roll of 11 or 12 definitely, definitely helps. Yeah, and I mean, and in in just so anyone who's who's either new or watching this is uh this is Northern King's scoring system, so there actually is a lot of value to picking up these random points um that are around the table. So normally, if you're if you're playing more of a um you know a twenty uh sorry fifteen mm-hmm. five win loss draw, you don't go for this huge huge wins. Um, but in this case, every little point that Michael has is going to make an impact this game. He gets one additional tournament point for that. So yeah, right totally- now. If he's looking at the back two, he's going to have the two. You expect him to take at least, you know, one or two on the on the left side here. He's looking at three, four, probably close to five if he things go really, really well for him. So, you know, yeah, in the it. in the classic twenty nil system, you would say I need to get one more token than my opponent, and then I want to table them. Um, exactly. And and that would be a lot different play than here, where it's like, okay, I have this mutant rat fiend, and he is worth more to me grabbing a a token way out in the middle of nowhere than he is trying to just pick up more points. Well, that's the same when you're playing with, like, uh, Blackjack, right? It's like every point, any point worth you take from a unit, every kill you make, every uh, token you hold is going to change your score. So We have uh, the hack paw against the soul drinker. Um, Yep, Yep. That Soul Drinker did damage to the Hack Paws, right? So he's now... He did, did yeah. He did those two. But, yeah. but he's still putting... If he kills five them, points, I think, so... He's still an individual, which means... He can still overrun. How far does he go? No, overrun. no. Oh! Uh, twice. Uh, wait. I, I'm confused now. What is it? I think he got four. I don't know if he got too excited and rolled it twice. Yeah, I think the twice. four is going to be in. enough. That's in. That's definitely in, and that's just you know so, this is the uh, the coup de gras here. I think as far as yeah, uh, I think I think Mark know, is getting tabled here. Uh, I, yeah, I can't disagree be stuck with that. What, yeah. this, this um, R left at the end. So I think I, mean, I think Michael Percy is probably going to come out of this with a full twenty five points. Like we were saying, as the Northern Kings, every individual um, objective you hold is plus one points up to five. He's only got to sit on five. He's currently sitting on five. If the game ends right here with the, or next turn with everything being tabled, then uh, he will probably. be probably be looking at a big old 25 point win yeah re- really a clinic here put on by, by michael percy here i mean honestly like this is this is how you play a uh, fast attack army what's unique and and you know i kind of think mark was was just caught off guard at every turn honestly um as far as as positioning the units well, abilities that, and what they're going to do I, and, and i think a huge part of that was the nimble there was quite a few nimble charges that went off quite a few things that happened that i don't think mark was necessarily yeah. expecting and i don't know if that was just 
not double checking those nimble spots, but it's also like we said, there's six units that can do nimble charges. So like you get a little overwhelmed. It's also there the, the fiend that, board. Yeah. When, yep. when two armies are trying to do some of the same stuff, which is like move fast, hit hard, um, pick up units in one go and then overwhelm. It's right. when you, when you are doing that a tiny bit worse, or when you get on the back foot, like you just lose big, like you don't have a plan B. <laughs> there's yeah. no, yeah, there's, yeah. No, there's, there's no redundancy. There's no real coming back from losing, yeah. losing your screens in, in turn two, when you were trying to set up turn three charges and your hammers yeah. weren't there yet. And there was nothing really from our, I mean, we can go in and nitpick like individual choices or, or placements or pivots or that sort of thing. But from a like grand strategic battle plan, he had to just throw units in and hope for the best. Um, yeah. Because that's all this army does. This army doesn't do anything else. So once it starts to go bad for you, you're sort of stuck just losing big. Like, that's absolutely. what happens. Yeah, these, um, and we're seeing these Reapers just get absolutely hammered. Well, they were exposed. They didn't, they didn't have their cover. Um, yeah. They were no. formed on from all sides in true, true rat fashion. Uh, <laughs> this game, and there's I mean. like the I feel like I'm playing League of Legends. GG. So yeah. wait a minute. So he did. He uh, he lost the fiends too to the. He lost the fiends. So that's that, that's his last story. He lost it all. In the middle. I mean, I think realistically that he knows that that there's not a thing he can do anymore. I mean, GG. he's got all five tokens. He can't even kill him. So the GGs are called. You know, hands have been shook, and uh, uh, I see some dice being rolled here. Not exactly sure what he's doing. Uh, Maybe seeing if he would Maybe kill a lightning the, bolt, uh, I think. He's, he's throwing a lightning bolt to see if he yeah. can potentially get some attrition points back. Yeah. Um, I see potentially a wound there um, and a nerve troll of a six. Probably, well, I don't yeah. know what he's shooting at, but it's He alive. took out the soldier and crit in the middle. He oh, shot the, it. The, the, there was a oh, hard sorry, he shot that. it. Okay, my yeah. mistake. <laughs> okay. I thought it was, so I like Mark's yeah. like GG, and then they're like, hold on, hold on. Let me kill this last thing. Yeah, wait yeah, a minute. Right. You still have one thing on the board. Let's game it out if I want to kill exactly. it. Oh, yes, this, is, this is a full route. This is a 25-point win here for Michael, and then very well earned, honestly. A very tough opponent that he was able to kind of just pick apart with good angles and good charges. I mean, I think one of the things you're paying attention is replay. If you're, if you're a new player, even if you're an experienced player, is looking at how the hack paws were always in the right spot at the right turn and how you know they, they were in these like good angles it's not pushing them too far forward it's definitely putting them in the in the flanks and kind of angling forward inward um and just kind of taking advantage of your opponent's lower speed especially with the individuals i mean this is the game where those those individuals needed to be there to kind of lock down those units and they just didn't do that in my opinion uh, i think that was one of the, the, the bigger uh factors yeah I concur. Everything Alex said. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. It's easy to say when you uh, know the result already, right? So Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. It's, it's uh, hopefully get to hear from these players um, at least a little bit. Um, you know, I think it was a very well-played game, very tight game um, as far as uh, both players. Looks like they kind of had a handle of things on, the, on how to play and tactics. Yeah. Just All um, right. Let's, yeah. uh, let's bring the players on it. Perfect. Welcome, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome. Hey, there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so let's going? just let's just let's just go ahead and just just get that out of the way. There we go. Yeah, we don't need uh, to look at that anymore. <laughs> when when did, when exactly did your soul leave your body, Mark? What? Uh, what? <laughs> it, it started when he did like eleven wounds to that Reaper regiment or that uh, yeah, Fiend regiment. Like and pretty much steadily after that, uh, pretty much by my turn three, I was like, well, this is a uh, unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, we were we, we were noticing that like uh, kind of going back to turn two, losing a whole lot of your screens there that you need uh, before you were really all the way in position. It seemed like it really put you on the back foot early. It did. Yeah, that was so unfortunate. So we, before we get too far into, we did have a question from one of the the viewers on YouTube that was specifically around token placement and board side choice. Mm -hmm. So we noticed uh, a the tokens were sort of slightly pushed towards our bottom, which was ended up being Michael's side. Um, and was that, were you putting more tokens down there? Like someone had to opt into putting more tokens onto that side. Was it you or Michael? And then who had board choice? Um, I had board choice. Okay. Yeah, which I'm no, not thought no, I think, on. Sorry, I think the other way around. I had board choice. You had uh, first turn choice. Oh, that's true. That's true. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you, um, you picked the side with more tokens and a uh, more open sort of deployment. Yeah, I picked the bottom side, yeah. And who would put more tokens on that side? Who would um, stack that? 
I placed the first token, I think. Yeah. Um, can you, can we, um, I can, there's like a draw option on the board. I don't know if we want to use that. Yeah, let's do it. Bring the board up. Let me see. We have the. This will see if this will work. Is that visible? Can we have the UB thing back, I guess? Uh, let me see if me bringing that back up. So, and, and as we're talking about it too, is that, is that some yeah. conscious decision on anyone's part? Is anyone think, hey, I really yeah, want we to can practice? This. Oh, yep. So, um, yeah. So, as far as actually deploying them, um, I know that this was the last one placed. That's uh, mm -hmm. one that Mark had placed. Um, I placed this guy. Um, he placed all think, the ones on the right. One? Yeah, I think you placed the one on the right side there as well. Oh, did I? I think so. So I know I placed the the one over here. I know you placed that one, and I know you placed uh, this one. Yeah, yeah and that and the last one. So yeah, and the bottom one. Yeah. So Mark, it looks like you kind of like heavily put tokens to the bottom side. Is that kind of? Yeah. Well, if if he had one table side, table side, I... it would have been awesome. But we were just wondering who had placed. Yeah. Them so with that last was. one, it was given where everything else was. I was kind of pretty boxed in because it was either where it went. Or it was something kind of like around here, or or around here. Yeah, not that would be a real tough placement. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So between given options, that one felt it was the most available of those three. Because yeah, I, I, obviously, I, I could have put it, you know, back here somewhere. But that's, you know, if you win board edge, then great. If you don't, then terrible. <laughs> At least that one was still hopefully relevant. For sure. I think I think that's a good point. I mean, I think we kind of want to know the thought process there. I mean, one thing I want to ask is, is kind of, um, to me, I think um, giving the choice to go, you did win the choice to go first or second, and you picked second. Um, you know, given, I'll be honest, I, I got a little surprised by some of the shooting that came out of his army. I think, I think, I feel like the way you played, maybe that happened to you too, but um, was that something that maybe you thought that, that was a big factor, especially the way that played out on the right side? For sure. So, the the thought in going second was you know one most objective zone scenarios I would prefer to go second that way you can move to wherever you can. Um, and the second thought is given how much he's a speed oriented army, if he goes first, then he basically loses a turn because he doesn't want to go forward much of anything. Um, that in theory then helps me set more of a tempo because then I can run forward and jam up and yada yada yada. Um, in hindsight. <laughs> I feel like I probably would have preferred to go first, um, just so that way I could just literally run 20 inches, 16 inches straight forward and just not give him any options. Um, thinking about it on turn, I don't know, Mike, was it like turn four or something? I think I started talking about that, about how, you know, if, because given, three, four, yes, yeah, because no, given where everything was by turn two, I think remember, I was pretty much boxed in still on my half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Versus if I had actually gone first and just literally ran, like he had, I think the front scurrier was there. I think it was the furthest forward. So if I were just run up, you know, phantoms, fiends, oop, meep, draw, fiends, phantoms, fiends, like that way, your whole line of scurrier is back here. Yeah, I mean, you've got things you can charge right in front of you, but you can't really back up much. You either engage that or you just let me get to what I want. And still get shot, um, you know, less less cover. It did, in theory, help having this, you know, blocking cover and a little bit of cover from that that hill or that that wall. But as we saw, it didn't really do much for me. Yeah. So the other interesting part of that that we saw that was a, a theme throughout this was um, cra crazy nimble charges coming from all angles from mm -hmm. the hack paws. We aren't in your brain or in some of these. How many of those were sort of a surprise to you that you either didn't see or um, were they just the situations where you know they were there and if, if Michael saw them, he gets them and you were just in a bad spot? Like, uh, we, don't, we don't need to go to every one of them. but Sure. Like? <laughs> uh, the majority of them I saw coming. I mean, given yeah. how many a, a, a attack vectors Mike had, you know, you basically need to pick the best of a bad situation, which is the point of having <laughs> all those hack paws, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it's, you know, it, yeah, basically he's just trying to make the, the best out of a bad situation as much as he can. Um, he did a great job positioning and making me, you know, 
commit where I needed to, but then if, if things don't go, not even averagely, but honestly, like with, on that, that rat fiend charge over here on turn two, I, you know, losing that, that fiend regiment made me realize it's either, you know, we, we commit now and hope that I get that. I'm going to say 30%, but most certainly less than that, but hope I can break and then reposition to account for that, that, uh, uh, hack paw regiment that was sitting over here waiting. Or I just kind of spend two to three turns repositioning back this way, which in hindsight, I guess, was probably more of the right choice, given how poorly that right flank ended up going. Um, but letting that whole, the two rat fiends and the, you know, everything else on that side get it, be able to commit more to the middle. Again, it's kind of one of those making the best out of a bad situation, trying to do the best you can, and it's still a bad situation. <laughs> Yeah, and we're not we're not trying to rub it in. We know no, what no, no. we're watching. Um, we just it's it's good to get some of that insight into what you were thinking for for people watching. So yeah, yeah. So uh, Michael, well, the, go ahead. <laughs> the the you you haven't had a chance to talk much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I think it pretty much the the list kind of performed. The, the way that I was intending it to, I think it actually, it helped me a good bit not having to deal with any incoming shooting because that's when I, with, with, when it's not facing any shooting, a list like this can be really methodical and um, can take its time to set up the, um, the arcs that it wants. Um, I was playing a kind of a variation on this style of list previous to this where I had like nine units of Vermintide. Um, and the idea was just tons of overlapping, pretty long range charge um, arcs. It's a little trickier to set up with this list because with the the Vermintide, they are never blocking line of sight to each other, um, whereas you do, you are with the hack paws. Um, so that was a little bit trickier as far as the actual approach. Um, I really wanted to test out the Scurriers, and I think they did awesome. I'm really happy I got to actually use the Scurriers duelist um, a couple times. Yeah, it was uh, that was pretty yeah, fun. That was cool. So um, that's one. That's one we wanted to check, and I, and I hate again to stick the knife in. No, that, that's good. That first scurrier charge that allowed him to get. Definitely in forgot duelist. list. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's like, not going to beat around the bush. Just going to get yeah. straight to it. Yeah, because I was like, you know what? Like ten, twelve isn't great, obviously, but you know, ten attacks on fours, vicious fours. Like, yeah, I, I might be wavered, but I should be able to handle that. And then, nope. <laughs> yeah. You're like, all oh, right. Nice. Yeah, I, I totally knew that was coming. Right, right. Well, that's the that's advantage of playing this one, I think, Michael's list, where it's a very unconventional um, units, right? It's not, you yeah. know, I can't tell you how many times I was looking at your list to, to look up rules in the middle of the game, right? I was like, wait, wait, what is the unit again? So, you know, it, <laughs> um, it's, I don't know if you count on that, Michael, or like, I don't know if uh, Mark, they caught you off guard. I mean, I, I know, I think, you know, I was kind of curious to see how many times this army's hit the table um, and whether you've refined it or not, or just kind of happened. Yeah, I, I think I think that is, um, I don't know if it's necessarily something that I rely on. I think usually, um, you know, especially when I'm using kind of uncommon stuff, I like to continually remind my opponent, um, you know, what they do. Um, that's one of those that, to be honest, I didn't even see the Soul Drinker until I decided to charge it. I was like, oh, wait, I can, I can use my Duelist now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but... Uh, I think it's more just kind of a byproduct of trying to build lists around stuff that people don't really take. Um, Scarier seemed overpriced to me um, for what they do. And I kind of wanted to, like, it's nice to, to put it on the table and, and go through the reps to see if maybe this isn't overpriced. Maybe this is kind of just, uh, it requires a certain style um, to try to see, you know, where like the, um, the RC's head was at with pricing certain things. Um, and see if it's viable. Um, and then hack pods, they, I liked them a lot in V3. They were just too soft. So getting a defense buff, I think they're they're really good. Yeah. So we had we we talked about it on the cast, and then um, some folks came in and and talked about it again in the comments, which is the hack pods are sort of unlocked in the meta a little because of the lack of of kind of light shooting. Like you don't have elf list just tabling it. Yeah. Um, true. And then the the other interesting comment to back up what what Alex was saying is Tom Annis came on and said, you know, basically some some variation of the hardest thing about playing Michael is figuring out what his units do. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I play, I play a little bit of everything. So, we're, um, it, you're you're firmly in the wargaming hipster territory. <laughs> we, we know. That's good. All right. So, um, thanks so much, Mark and Michael, for letting us look over your shoulders while you're playing. Uh, yeah, congratulations to congratulations to Michael, thanks. and uh, good luck to both of you in the next round of the tournament. And thanks again for just letting us letting us check the game out. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Of course. Yep. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, I'd like to thank Alex and Ashley and Britton for for hanging out with me and kibitzing while we watch uh, watch this game. Um, for everyone who is interested, we will be doing these uh, throughout the tournament. Uh, next round, we're hoping to get some some UK players in for for round three. Uh, so if you're playing in the tournament uh, and you're interested in having us stream one of your games, please reach out to us and let us know. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, or if you're interested in, in joining in on the fun and maybe uh, offer commentary for one of the matches, uh, let me know as well. We're always looking for, for volunteers to get a little, little uh, variety, rotate some folks through, get some some uh, fresh faces, and not not relying on the same three people over and over again. Not that you guys Basically are doing a Basically, Mike's job. sick of our voices is what and it I don't is. love you. I do <laughs> yeah. love you. But also, a little variety never hurt anything. Yeah. So, you know, when he says variety, he's still going to get three other white dudes with beard. With beards, yeah, totally. That's that's how it's gonna go. It's 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 the curse of our hobby. But um, that's how it goes. So anyway, um, now that I've completely lost my train of thought, right? I was wrapping up. So thanks, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to leave us uh, feedback if there's uh, any specific kind of matches you'd like to see in the future, or if there's any topics that you would like us to cover about the games while we're doing them that that we're not already doing. Feel free to give us some feedback. We we love hearing what uh, people think. Um, and other than that, hope everybody stays safe out there and has fun, manages to get some games in. Uh, and we will see you next time on Dash 28 Live. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Bye.